David Goggins, welcome. My man, good to see you again, man. Great to see you. It was late 2016, early 2017, I believe, when you were in my lab at Stanford. Yes, sir. Uh, we did a little work later that that day uh, yep. down in San Jose, and gosh, uh, see you everywhere, but it's not enough, so great to have you here. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, brother. You embody discipline and doing hard things. Right. I think you just start right off with yep. that. The, the Let's bold, just go there. The bold truth. <laughs> But right before we went hot mics, right, we were talking about learning. Right. Right now, you're spending some time learning and doing things that I think most people probably don't typically associate David Goggins with. Right. So why don't you tell us about that? Well, most people just look at me as the guy that runs and yells as he's running. So if you've ever seen his TikToks, he literally runs and yells. It's pretty good. And that's a... Uh, it's a good shtick. Uh, while I do that, you know, to motivate people... But people don't understand that my day is broken up into segments. I work out, I eat, I sleep, but I spend most of my time studying. Mm. So like I'm in the medical world, I'm a you know, paramedic in, a, oh. in Canada, but I spend a lot of my time trying to nuke every single thing about it because I'm not trying to just be a paramedic, learn about veins and arteries and how the heart pumps and stuff like that. I'm trying to learn to the point where I can save someone's life. And even though paramedics are doing that all over the world, I'm trying to be that paramedic that can really dissect exactly what's going on and figure out, you know, what medication goes where. Just trying to, you know, just trying to learn, you know, the, uh, the algorithm of what's going on, man. So I spend a lot of time with it. I love the word algorithm because when I teach biology or try and learn anything mm -hmm. that's related to biology, and especially the human body, right. I need to know the nouns. Yep but it's the verbs that matter. And that's really what you're talking about. Like, like just saying that, that sits there, that brain part there doesn't right. tell you how it all works together. No. So what is your process for studying look like? Like if we dropped a, uh, a uh, camera in the room, but right. a microphone into that, into your inner dialogue, right. gosh, wouldn't, wouldn't we all love that? But if we dropped a microphone into your inner dialogue, are you waking up looking at the books and going, yeah, fresh day, right. let's learn. Or is, some of the same resistance that you've talked about coming up around physical yep. work. Is that coming up from time to time? You know what? I was nervous at first. I'm going to keep the mother. I'm, I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it real. So I'm not a real smart guy. And what I mean by that is I was born with ADD, ADHD. All, like my brain cannot retain it. Our neurodivergent king. Me neither, David. Me neither. Information. Me neither. I can't remember people, places, or things. I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure I got ADHD. But like, I'm not some genetic freak when it comes to running, when it comes to lifting weights. I'm, I am absolutely the bottom of the barrel. And people will never believe me. And they can just, you know, whatever. Believe what you want to believe. So when you ask me this question about what does studying look like for me, I have to go over the same page over and mm. over and over over and over again. While Jennifer can look at that page, while she's, you know, quizzing me, she'll learn it right then as she's, she doesn't know anything about it. She will quiz herself or quiz me and learn it as she's quizzing me. Hmm. It's the most frustrating thing in the world how my brain works. So That's interesting. I definitely like to listen to things one or two or three times because I learn different things from it each time, even with movies or that's why I've reread a lot of books or I've reread a lot of things. It's not only you learn it differently, but you hear it differently depending on the stage of life you're in, you know? What I, so what I do is I literally sit there with a pen and paper and I have my books and I go through and have to write everything down every single day. I will study the same page until it's photographic memory from writing the same thing down. And then from there, I'll go back through and relearn it again. So I'll learn the bulk of it, but then I'll go through and learn the small things within that. So if it's a medication, I'll learn what the medication does. I'll first, I'll learn how to even say the medication because these medications aren't like, you know, like albuterol. No, it's, it's, it's very big words. So I'll go through, learn how to say mm. the name. Then I'll go through, learn what the dose is. Then I'll go through, and this is like every single day. It's not like, oh, I got it. Let's just go through. No, nothing is, I got it. Every single thing, I, so I, I, I can't wait to get in this conversation because everything I do in life, it sucks. Everything I do in life, it sucks. That's why when I was 300 mm -hmm. pounds and 24 years old, it wasn't Whoa, like Whoa, 300 pounds at 20 what years old? Hello? I had some big epiphany of let's just go be a Navy SEAL and let's lose some weight. No, I knew my entire life was going to be a struggle. 
mm. which is why I just ignored it. And I said, I'm not even trying to jump off into this shit and learn how to read, how to write, how to memorize, how to become something I am not. But through that process, something happened to me. Hmm. And I realized, this, this is why I feel sorry for no one. In this podcast, they're going to really not like me because people are going to think that I am maybe lying or maybe fibbing or exaggerating. No, I am literally, I was the lowest form on earth, no talent, no ability to learn. And I literally know what it is to be rock bottom and to build that up. So that question about learning, it's a pain in my ass. And I don't have to do it. Just think about it. I'm 49 years old and I'm a multimillionaire. Mm. I don't have to do anything. So all I thought about when I was growing up is, man, I can't wait to one day get to the point where I no longer have to do this stuff. But what happens, I got older, it became a way of living. So mm. how I do every day is how I do every day. It's a, it's a discipline. It's a regimen. It's a, it's a, it was a choice I made. And the choice I made was, what are you willing to sacrifice and what are you willing to give up to find every bit of who you are as a human being? Mm. And I was willing to give everything to do that. So Ooh. studying is no joke. I love that you're studying. I recall. Okay, that's really interesting. So far, total vibe. Total vibe, yeah. <clears throat> I relate to a lot of what he just said. Obviously, you guys know, like, I'm not the most academic. Like, I have a really hard time studying. I have a really hard time being in school. I obviously, like, graduated high school. I couldn't sit through college. That was not going to happen. I went straight into the workforce for that reason. I'm a much better – I love to work. And when I study, same. I'm taking notes. I'm const I have my partner, I asked him, I was like, can you go get me notebooks? He bought me like 10 notebooks. I go through them all the time because I'm just writing down notes. Typing doesn't feel as like it stays in my brain as much, but things are so hard for me to rec uh, recollect. I'm so bad at people, places, and things. I think sometimes when I say like I'm not intellectual in that way, I'm meaning to say like I'm not very academic, but I'm an incredibly smart person, but I don't think you need to be academic to be smart. I think introspection doesn't come from academia as we know around the world globally it's just like there's a mythos around um introspection being a part of intellect in terms of an academia which i think is a western concept obviously and so when i see david goggins already i'm like oh yeah i relate to that like that's a vibe and also i would don't i don't i do not not think he's smart like of course i think he's smart obviously he also also just said things that I think were really, really palatable and understandable. Now, I never thought of myself as like the lowest life form because I think I was always kind of told I was a smart kid growing up. Even though it didn't show in academia, I feel like I've always been street smart and self-resilient and independent. And I never got to 300 pounds. But to be fair, I always I didn't have that luxury, I think, because of the way that my story went. But I think his story is much different. I wonder how he got to 300 pounds. And I, when I say luxury, I mean... Because I was busy too much as an eight-year-old trying to figure out if I should unalive myself or not. You don't really have time to eat when you're too busy. Like, in my opinion, I didn't have time to eat as much as I had time to, like, contemplate. You know, I was too busy thinking. But I think if you said, like, what David Goggins said, which is, like, you're putting your life off. You're ignoring it. I think you tend to drown in habits that are, like, addictive. And food is, like, absolutely a part of addiction, right? Compulsory addiction. So that's interesting. Like, that's an interesting – already I'm, like, hooked. Okay. A few years ago, I heard uh, some interview or podcast with you, and you just threw out, like, I don't know what I'll do next. Maybe I'll be a scientist. Yeah. And, I, and I went, yeah. yeah. I was like – because I knew, because I know you a bit, right. and I see your work out there, but we'd met before, that if you decided that, you were going to do it. Right. And learning medicine, which is what you're doing, right. learning human physiology. See, that's really interesting to take that – to make that decision to learn more. I do think about learning things just to know the information, but we don't live in a world where we value learning things just to know information, which sucks. Cass says we also tend to see char charismatic people as smart. That is true. And good looking people. People who are pretty, if they're men, men who are good looking are seen as more intelligent. Uh, women who are more like uh, studious looking, we associate with smarts. Like we associate a lot of signaling like aesthetic with intelligence, which is really interesting. It's so detailed. And, and people uh, out there have to understand when you look at a textbook and you see the, the veins and the capillaries, different colors, mm -hmm. in the, when the body's open, they're not different colors. Right. Right? You know, right, they're not, right. So, I mean, some things are, have different color contrast, but it's not like it's all labeled when you pop it open. Exactly. And so, so the process of writing things down by hand is important mm -hmm. for you. Do you go, so you go back and read those notes. Do you think about that stuff on your runs too? Or are you segmenting your day? Like when you're done studying, are you heading out for a run mm -hmm. and thinking about other things? Or are you still rehearsing the material in your head? So when I write it down, I write it down. And I'm able to, I'm actually looking down at this table right now because I'm back to writing. So I'm actually there right now as I'm speaking to you. I write it down in a way that I'm memorizing page 69. Mm. So I'm writing it down. So then writing it down and that page sync together in my brain. So I'm looking at the book in my brain right now. Oh, so he, he has that photographic memory, right? I don't have that. But I do try to imagine, me too. You'll see me 
like look off to the side and that's because I'm imagining what I remember looking at, but I don't see it like perfectly clear. I just see the vibes, but I can't actually see like, I don't have like photographic memory. I don't know if that's what he's explaining, but I do that. You guys see me do it on stream. You have, you've seen me do it on stream when I don't realize I'm muted. And so I'm not reading chat. It's because I'm remembering a thing that I was supposed to remember. Um, that's really relatable. And yes, for those who asked me, I do go back and look at my notes in my notebooks, but then after a while I do throw them out, but I do go back and look at my notes when I need them because they spark like new ideas in my head. Like that's just how it works for me. And I have to do it over and over again. So that page is stuck in my mind. So I'm literally flipping through pages as I'm taking these tests and I'm taking these national tests to become a paramedic or become a advanced EMT or whatever. I'm literally, as I'm taking that test, I'm going through and I'm like, and I'm flipping pages in my head where that page was. And how I do that is just from how I, how I write it and how it's on the page. When I run, I can't recall any of it. I cannot, I cannot bring any of that because I'm running. How my mind is wired now is that everything I do is what I do because the focus it takes for me to, like right now, I'm running. I'm not like a great runner. I'm not like injury free. So like my first 20 minutes of the run, I'm limping. Mm. I'm literally limping because I've had several knee surgeries and Ooh. my body was twisted. And so now it's untwisting. So people look at me, oh, look, like he's limping, you know, like limping when he runs. I am limping when I run. My body's jacked up. So I'm focusing on how to get the best out of a broken body. Oh. So everything I do is a total focus on what I'm doing at that, at that point in my life. So it seems like you've really trained away or somehow gotten away from the ADD that mm -hmm. you mentioned. Because what you described is like a deep trench, mm -hmm. like a V-shaped trench. I'm right. imagining like there's a ball bearing and, it's like, and it can only go forward in that trench right. or back and it goes forward. It, it's not like sliding around at the like concave at the bottom, right. like a tension. So it's like you've trained that up. Is there a similar feeling when you're in the full focus of running versus full focus of studying? Is it kind of feel like, oh yeah, that's the same groove, but different thing? Ooh. Or is it just completely different world? It's a completely different world. Mm. It's like it's just both of them for me, it's, it's suffering, but suffering a whole different way. Like when I was going through school, I'll never forget, I think I was in third grade. And back then, you know, ADD, ADHD wasn't like, you know, here's this medicine, or here's this thing. They want to put you in a special school. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was so far behind in learning that their big thing was, let's just put him in a special school because he'll never learn. Oh. And through that process of like, I don't want to be in a special school. I don't want to be treated any differently. It really, like I never took medication. I've never taken medication for this. Mm. That's why right now you see me looking right in your eyes. What the hell is, is you know, it's you've been saying right now. And that's why I don't feel bad for people who have ADHD, who have learning disabilities. And some are impossible because you just can't. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them you can. And, but people don't want to go through the process of focus, of teaching yourself how to truly focus. This is where my message gets lost. It gets lost because I may say, you know, MF or F, you know, I may be because that's the passion that comes out of me because that's, it takes everything for me to learn a sentence. Okay, that's interesting. So. It's interesting because the conversation we need to be having is at what point does advancement benefit you more than disadvantage you? And at what point does being or non-medicated disadvantage you more than advantage you? So like for him, maybe his ADHD is the kind where medication is less important than more. Obviously, his life is proof of that. For me, let's say I do have ADHD, right? Because this is really important. My life's been pretty okay, but I find myself struggling in different ways that makes me think, okay, maybe I do have ADHD. Maybe I do have like other things. I need to go get tested because I'm thinking, okay, if I can help this be better, if I could focus 10% more, holy crap, I feel like I could take over the world. And Goggins is saying focus by being disciplined. But my issue I'm running into right now is that it seems like every time I work on the discipline of focus, I lose so many spoons. I end up only being able to do this thing. And because I want to do more than one thing, I don't see it as beneficial. If I was just working and sleeping, just working and sleeping, like just streaming and sleeping, maybe I could do it. But if I was like in order to do all the other things that I'm doing, I don't actually think I would have the spoons. So I'm thinking, well, maybe it's medication. Maybe if I had medication, I wouldn't need to cut something out of my life because other people who don't seem who seem to be neurotypical can do all the things I'm doing and more. So I'm like, OK, so I must be something must be going on because I'm operating less than people who are doing similar things to me. But at the same time, like I don't want to neglect something in my life. But I also like don't want to do less than what I'm doing because I'm already doing less than other peers in my age group who are working in the same way. But also I'm doing more than the average person in my age group who's working a nine to five and doesn't work seven days a week. But that's different than the people who are working seven days a week. Okay. So then I was thinking about like, okay, well, what does this mean? Could I willpower and discipline my way through it? You know, I'm obsessed with discipline, but I refuse to willpower because willpower to me is temporary. I dig into a reserve of spoons I don't have to do it. 
So I cannot willpower my way through things without huge consequences to my mental and physical health. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm not going to be able to do this. And so again, it's like, okay, how do I do this? Ooh, Abby says, willing yourself to get through the executive dysfunction takes a lot of mental energy, which is a spoon, right? Exactly. So if I'm doing that, my mental health is going to take a huge decline. Now, I assume David Goggins only has ADHD and maybe some other things, but I have fibro, borderline, and possibly ADHD or autism or something that is also contributing to my like um, my neurodivergent meltdowns or like to other things that I'm experiencing where I'm like, why is this happening? Okay, I need like medical intervention because like they're going to know more, right? When I went back and said, I wish we lived in a world where people could just learn, what I mean is I would love to learn these things like a professional, but not be treated like a professional. Like I would love to learn the medical side of this without also it coming with the responsibility of quote unquote being a person who is a professional in this field. Like one of the disadvantages to being a person without a degree is everything you say doesn't matter, but also the benefit is that everything I say is my opinion. But if you have a degree, you're held to a different standard. But if you don't have a degree, you're held to a different standard. It's a catch-22, right? So I wonder if David Goggins, because I agree with him, but also his he's trying to take account for people with ADHD who are different than him. But I do think most people aren't trying before going to medication or most people aren't even trying medication because they think it makes them look weak. I feel like you should just be open to whatever tool helps you be better. But if the medication isn't making you better, it's not helping. If the medication makes you better, it's helping, right? I feel like people don't want, I think they make it really complicated and put a lot of shame attached to a lot of these things. Obviously, I'm not ashamed about taking medication if it helps me. But I think I'd be disappointed if I settled into something that was unnecessary um, before I gave discipline or a more, quote, natural option a chance, even though I think everything we do is nature. So you know what I mean? I think there's something to this. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, just Joe says, I wish I had that ADHD that had the motivation and discipline. I think it's also philosophy and values. So right now, David Goggins is also telling us his values. I think the reason that I'm able to stay disciplined is because it's a part of my values. I do believe that. But even I have a physical limitation. So I'm running into a physical limitation right now, a psychological limitation. My discipline and my values are there, but I'm running into no energy. Like I have no physical energy left. I am energy. I'm running out of energy, right? And I don't drink Red Bulls. I don't drink energy drinks. And I only have two cups of coffee a day and that's it. And I cut myself off. So I'm not willing to like chug energy drinks. That's not what I'm interested in doing, right? Shadow Beast says, the thing is you don't really know how much immediate control on focus and discipline with ADHD. Wait, the thing is you don't really have much immediate control on focus and discipline with ADHD. At least you're ridiculously inefficient at it. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Anissa says, I took ADHD meds for a bit and they helped me focus on things I wanted to focus on, but I realized I also maybe need an SSRI because it didn't make me less of a perfectionist or have more joy in it. Mm, noted, noted, noted. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Vyvanse helps a lot, especially in time blindness, but it costs in long terms in a uh, lot in terms of fatigue. See, fatigue is what I'm afraid. I'm already fatigued. Like I'm already tired. The The fibro takes it the fuck out of me. I need so much more sleep than I'm getting and it's just so inefficient to get it right now. So I'm working on it today. I slept 10 hours and I feel pretty damn good. Um, but that's a long chunk of time to be a fucking asleep, bro. That's a long time to be asleep. The whole like the whole world, you know what I mean? It's very hard to sleep 10 hours a day, even though it's what I physically need. It's really difficult. Um, let me see. Da, 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 da. Mm, Meh says, I don't think it's a goal approach thing. For him, the discipline is more meaningful than having more energy with limited spoons. Interesting. Okay. Kay says, facts, Brittany, that's how I started looking into ADHD for myself. Full power isn't sustainable. It's like going low power on emotional happiness to prioritize power and logical happiness. Exactly. Yeah. Major, like, relatable, bro. Mm-hmm. So when I speak about David Goggins, I can't speak about David Goggins in a way that's just calm and cool. Because when I wake up, I know the journey that it takes for me to find my greatness. And it's hard. Every, nothing is easy. Nothing mm -hmm. just like, oh, I wake up and I just do this or I do that. Or it just, you know, I watch people every day go through life and it's so easy. For me to be where I'm at today, it takes every bit of me. So when I speak about it, and as I get going here, you'll start seeing me, the temple will rise. The passion will come out because I'm back there. I'm doing what I do every day to become a human being. 
And so nothing is easy. Like running is running. It sucks, but you have a choice to make. Do you want to sit down and go back to that guy you once were? No. So this is what it takes. This, it, it takes that misunderstanding of people and they'll never get it because they were never David Goggins. Mm. So that is what it takes for me to do what I do. It may take you something differently. So for me, everything mm -hmm. has to be in the study. Everything has to be in this. Everything has to be in everywhere I am. It has to be there. Me, focus where I am. That's why you're my second podcast I've done since Rogan since the book came out. Mm. I don't have time for that shit. Because if I want to be great, I'm not trying to maximize money or maximize people knowing me. Oh. I do these things because maybe someone out there will understand me and get it and say, oh. I can grow from this guy. Mm. And others just won't. Sounds like friction. Okay, interesting. Interesting. He's very, he seems very values focused. Chin is something you're very familiar with. I just, this yes. word just, I feel like it's like yes. cast above us right now in yes. bold face, highlighted, underlined letters. It's just friction like, is growth. Friction. Yes. Like you're, you're up in the morning and I imagine David Goggins going to the coffee maker, yep. stretching out, good morning, sunshine. And you're telling me from eyelids open, mm -hmm. there's friction. Yes. And that is the thing that people don't, they don't fucking get. I believe, I mean, yeah, I, the very neurodivergent. This is a neurodivergent man. He's speaking truth. This is neurodivergent life right here, baby. Relatable. The biggest misunderstanding about David Goggins of all time is like, whether you believe in God or not, I do. He put this lab rat, which is me, on this planet. And said, let me fucking see what a beat up, abused kid who has, who can barely learn, barely learn, who has a twisted body, messed up, messed up genetics, sickle cell, this and that. Oh, oh, he had bad health health. Let me give him everything that pretty much disqualifies you from the military. But back then, it wasn't estrus. And, and let's put him in this and see what comes out of it. So to do that, friction. You don't wake up in the morning time and go to the coffee maker. Matter of fact, sometimes you don't even sleep. What it requires is when I'm at two o'clock, it's two o'clock in the morning and my brain is thinking about a fucking drug and I got to get up and look in my book to see if that drug is how I remember it. And this is every day of my fucking life. That's why I'm not trained a fighter or I train someone. I'm like, you have no fucking idea how great you really are because you are using such minimal, minimal of what you have. And if people can learn to focus this is what's possible. While hmm. it may not be pretty, like people want to do a documentary on me. I go, no, I want to do a documentary on me because I will have normal everyday people picking me apart. Oh, his life is miserable. Who wants to live like that? He looks, it's crazy how he's, it's almost like he's sick, he's psychotic. The most frustrating thing in the world for me is when normal people judge a man like myself Ooh. on what it really takes to extract greatness from nothing. Ooh. It takes every bit of who you are if you choose that route. If you don't, Merry Christmas. Do what you got to do. Oh, but yeah, all these things for me. You know, Papa Gut said it the other day. Papa Gut was reviewing that 14 year old, God bless her, with the millionaire dad who she's like, I'm going to be a millionaire by 20. And we're like, yeah, because your dad's a millionaire and he's putting money in your account at 14 years old. You're making 4K a month. Sit down, girl. But Papa Gut specifically said, you know, it's when you see a guy who came from nothing become a millionaire. That's amazing. When you see a girl who's raised by a millionaire end up like mediocre, it's kind of sad because like you didn't you didn't do better than your parents. And I feel like when what Goggins is saying sort of related to that is, you know, it's easy for a neurotypical person or a person without these issues to be like, oh, you know, at one point of their life. But you don't even understand what he's. That's why I think it feels so judgmental a little bit when the world looks at you and says, like, you should be able to do this because I can do it. But David Goggins is someone with ADHD telling other ADHDers, I can do this. So can you. And it's weird because we're all telling each other we can do this. So can you. But what we're really saying is if you are like me, you need to do it your own way, but I can do it. So can you. Does that make sense? Like he's not David Goggins isn't necessarily saying Oh, this just feels so relatable. Now, I feel like he's saying it better than I'm saying it. But I feel really relatable to this, where it's like people who aren't even in your category are looking at you and they think they understand you and you have no idea. We're not even playing the same game. That's what it is. Like, we're not even playing the same game. So the question is, how much of the same game are you playing that David Goggins is playing? That's interesting to me. Huh. Like, like I told you, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. I, I'm not coming here to talk about, like, you know, perform without purpose. Because I go through, when I write these books, I go through and try to dumb down David Goggins. How can I give normal people, and I'm normal, but I found something that most don't want to find. I say that all the time, don't I? Don't I say I'm normal all the time? And then people are like, but you're exceptional. And he says, I'm a great man. And I say, I must be unique. You're all of those things. You're normal. How can you, isn't it amazing? Like you're disadvantaged, but because you're disadvantaged, you're the type of person that also wants to become like better than the average because you have to. The irony is that if I want to, okay, this is, I'll explain it like this. In order for me to be even slightly as functional as a normal person, 
I have to push myself to excel past a normal person in order just to function like a normal person. But a normal person sees me as abnormal because I'm pushing harder than them, but also they see me as less than them because I'm not hitting the same points that they're hitting. So I have to work harder than a normal person to get a normal person life, but I also end up having a much more unique life than a normal person, but also less impressive life than a normal person because I'm not hitting those milestones the same way normal people are. It's like really, it's a really confusing like, so you get like praised for being like hardworking and like achieving goals and having the life you want. But then you kind of get looked at like, oh, but then why don't you have these other things that other people have? And it's like, well, because I'm not normal, but also I am normal. It's a very confusing conundrum. Hmm. How can I speak to people and give them something from this crazy psychotic brain that I've developed? How can I give them that? So I sit down with Jennifer for years and write down perform without purpose, callous your mind, armor your mind, the cookie jar, the accountability mirror, shit that people can fucking use in their lives. No, no. I'm glad it helps you. But the barbaric life that I live, that you have to live, the almost obsession that you must have mm. to be great, you can't put that shit in a fucking book, bro. Mm. You can't put it in a book. Can't. Mm. You can't write about it. It has to be experienced. It has to be experienced. And you mm. can't even, after you experience it, to write it in a book, it would seem like it needs to be locked up. This too, ain't, too gory. It's, it's too gory. It doesn't make sense for a guy that everything, every second of the day, he is trying to extract more from something. Hmm. He's constantly thinking, he's constantly, constantly disciplined, never going off the path. Whatever is injured on him, he figures a way. It's a conqueror's mindset. And very few people, if any, can really understand what that is. Like, a, a, I agree. I'm almost 50. Mm. And I've been this way for almost 30 years. Like, what do you do for fun? You, you never, I, 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 these questions, I don't, I don't get them. I don't understand them. I don't, so yeah. I get asked that sometimes. What do you do for fun? I start listening off all this stuff like podcasting, reading, right. Right, working out. Right. <laughs> but so some of that resonates. Literally, like literally me on New Year's, my husband was like, why don't you go do like something for fun? I was like, oh, I'll go edit. And he's like, no, Brittany, why don't you go like uh, do a hobby? I was like, I'll work out. I'll listen to a podcast. I'll go edit. And he was just like, Brittany. I was like, uh, like not that I don't have other things to do, but I need something that stimulates my brain is interesting. Like I turned the things that I like to do into a job. I'm really lucky, but I work really hard to do it. Like it just wouldn't have happened. And I'm not even like a big player like these people are, but I feel like that's what they did. I feel like David Goggins took the thing that he needed for his life and like turned it into a business, which is amazing. But also like he just has to do it for himself regardless. That's why I say it's not about the money. I think if I'm reading Goggins correctly, this is me thinking very highly of him in this moment. He's probably one of those people like me in my category, not like me, but in my category, many people who the money follows the lifestyle you're already living because you have to do it. And you can build a brand around it, but you had to do it anyways. Like if there was no money, he'd still have to do the lifestyle because he has to do it to function. Like, does that make sense? I think money follows you if you're good at branding. Like, there's definitely some things I could be doing to be bigger, but I'm so bad at them. But again, he, I have to do them anyways. I don't do them because I'm in the lifestyle. I do them because I have to. And you can turn your already have to life into money. Does that make sense? I think that's what he means when he says it's not about the money. It's about his lifestyle, but he was able to turn his lifestyle into money. Right? But I think what's so truly unusual about what you're describing, your process, mm -hmm. is that, you know, from go, it's hard. Yep. And I have to ask, was being 300 pounds, having, oh. I'm using the words you've described, no, wow. you, you've said it before, mm -hmm. you had a tendency at one point in your life early on, tell lies, yep. try and get people's approval, my ass off. crazy haircuts, mm -hmm. attention seeking, and, and yet all of that triggered something. Mm -hmm. That now um, I know nothing about changing my haircut every week or having attention seeking behavior. Thank you. Just kidding. So relatable. You know, I talked to my sibling yesterday and I told them I was like, hey, I think I'm having um, like kind of like neurodivergent overstimulation slash meltdowns. And I think I now understand why people assign mental health to people with like um, autism or ADHD or something or they make it seem like it's borderline. Because I'm not feeling borderline at all. Zero borderline symptoms. I feel great. No splitting. I feel fantastic. But I'm absolutely being impacted by like something neurodivergent. My husband and I have discussed it. I'm going in for testing, hopefully. Because it's obviously not borderline. It's obviously not depression. It's not anxiety. It's like an overstimulation like meltdown. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? 
And I realized like from the outside, it looks like borderline, but it's not borderline. And I'm like, this is absolutely not what's happening. And I'm like, oh, this is why women get misdiagnosed with borderline who aren't, who are actually ADHD or autism, because it looks the same to the untrained eye or to lazy therapists or psychologists. And I'm like, oh, it's so different though. The internal complexities are so different. Their narrations in my head are so different. I'm not sad. I'm not depressed. I'm not anxious. I don't want to self-harm. Nothing in related, like I definitely do have borderline, but nothing like a borderline meltdown. Just so different. Just 1000% different. Just so different. So I called my sibling up who's neurodivergent and I said, hey, I think I'm having those things. And they were like, yeah, you should get tested, bro. And I was like, I should get tested because it's so different. And even like, thank God my partner is so supportive. But he was the one who's like, hey, like, do you need to get tested? And I was like, fuck, it's getting worse as I age. It's getting more. It's becoming more and more of a challenge. Like David Goggins says, it, it's not getting easier. It's not getting easier. Like the the I have less energy, less spoons, more overstimulation, more and like it's just it's, you know, so, OK, like it's time to get tested. Like it's time to be serious about doing the medical side of a new diagnosis, probably, maybe. Let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but I relate so much to what Goggins is saying, which is like, I don't, pers- again, every day I wake up and I ask myself, okay, how many spoons today, Brittany? How many spoons today, Brittany? And then we do it based off of that. And then sometimes we have to use willpower. Sometimes I have to move into the reserve. Yui says, does it feel weird, like weird pins and needles all over your body? Like I had it the other day and I re- like the day I took off um, from, uh, I had, well, I didn't take off in, in a noticeable way, but I was supposed to do a photo shoot and I just like couldn't do it. I did a Discord event is- instead and I pushed myself to do it. It worked out great. It was a great event, but we had lots of fun. But the whole day, it felt like I was so overstimulated and so just unable that I was like, do this thing. And I was just basically unable. It was like everything was drained from me. And I was sitting on the couch in a hoodie and just saying like, get up and do it. And my body was just not having it. And my partner would come and sit with me. He's like, are you okay? I was like, I'm fine. I'm not sad. I'm not anxious. I'm not crying. I'm not. Now I did eventually break down and cry, but it was from like a realization that like, this is like neurodivergency probably because it didn't match up to anything mental health related. It wasn't mental illness. It was like, a, it was like, I can't even explain it to you, but it was so specific. It was its own little energy. It was its own little bubble. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh my gosh, like, what are we doing? And I was, and I sat there, I was like, come on, like, what is this? And I sat there and I was like, well, this is just it then. So then I had to practice like radically accepting that it wasn't going to happen, but I kept looping. And I told him, I was like, okay, so I know I need to let go of the attachment of not getting work done today. But I wish I had told myself I didn't have to get work done today. But since I had planned to do work today and now I can't get it done, my brain is refusing to accept that we're not doing it. But I know we're not going to do it. And so my brain, I just sat there looping and he just let me vent. I was like, it's not happening. It's not happening. Why isn't it happening? And I was just like, oh, my God. And I was just sitting there like so frustrated. And he just let me do it. And he just sat there and he would check in with me. And you know what's funny is like because I was out for commission, it it made him like have all this energy. He got so much shit done that day. He was like very productive. And I just like watched him. And I was like, wow, I'm so jealous. (laughs) You're being so productive. Or I guess I'm envious. But like I was like, wow, it was great. It was a great day, but it was a hard day in a sense. Like it wasn't a hard day. It wasn't. I even said to him, I was like, this is even a bad day. I feel no sadness. I am not depressed. I was like, I'm just so upset. My body couldn't do it. So I, I just let it go. I did my Discord event. It was great. We had a great time. But even like it was the weird, like I can't even. But OK, I'm glad in the chat you guys are relating to this because I. What? what? And so that's why I've taken the month off of January from doing the podcast because I know I'm overdoing it. I know I'm not sleeping enough and I know that I am like burning out in a way. So I'm like, okay, don't do that. Like, don't do that to yourself. Don't run into a negative cycle. So yeah. Okay. All of that to say, I need to get tested, you know? And also thank you for all your comforting comments. I see them all. Thank you. Do you think those hardships were necessary to flip the switch? I don't know if they were necessary, but it was something that made me feel, I didn't feel good. It was easy. The brain that I was given as a child 
it was easy to go home and think about what, how do I want to be a free? Oh, the brain I was given as a child. Oh, that is some self-awareness, bro. Today, how do I want to show up to school today and be a freak? It didn't require me going home and opening a book up saying, it's going to take me all year to learn this fucking page. So instead of learning that page, I learned how to become a character. And mm. maybe that character that I created, that 300 pound insecure guy that used to fake, fake it till I make it type of guy, you know, let me uh, become your friend. Let me lie to you until you like me type of guy. When, when you have any kind of, any manhood, womanhood, a human being, a soul, a spirit, any, I had no, I, I must have just this much pride. Because that's exactly what opened the door for me. Because mm. every day you were a character, every day you were a clown, every day you open that Spanish book or that science book or English book, and you like when you looked at it, it was like it looked like a foreign language. And you're saying, where do I start? Where, where do I start? Ugh, me with Croatian. Dobar dan. And obviously it was necessary. The more I talk about it, it was necessary. Because what happened is I became haunted mm. by the mere fact that this is my existence. And Ooh. Ooh. you gotta live with that. I lived it for a lot of years. David is killing it, bro. This is my existence. This is my existence. What a realization. And so I sat back and said, okay, all right. I know what this takes. And when you sit back as fucked up as I was, and I had a laundry list, a, a table like this of what I have to do to become just a human being that can make ends meet, that can make a thousand dollars a month just to get there. It was like, oh my God, dude, like how did, I'm 16, 17. I can't read. I can't write. And I, Oh my God, I'm so behind the power curve and my brain is about being depressed and my dad beat my mom's not home and kids are calling me nigger at school. And I'm like, oh my God, man, oh my what the God. fuck do I do? And it wasn't like someone came around and said, hey man, you can do this. This is all me. Some people know, where's this cold man come from? I'm not trying to be cold. It's the reality of my life. Mm. It's the reality of a lot of people's lives. Mm. And so, yeah, it, that had to happen for me to be haunted, to be haunted, to pull out, to extract the guy in the day. That haunting is something that's still there today. Because no matter how much you improve, no matter how much you change who you are, it's not permanent. You Ooh. just wake up and say, oh my God, man, you're, you're David Goggins. You break records. You do this, you do that. People don't know, how are you, how are you able to just be so hard? Can I never turn the fucking thing off? Mm. Once it turns off, I go right back to the David Goggins that is. Ooh. Yes, ma'am. Now, this works in relation to two or five bubbles. It doesn't fucking matter what level of introspection you're on. It doesn't matter if he's a two or a five. Right now, I'm just hearing two stuff, but that's great. This is why twos are very introspective. All in the, Again, we're not talking about the universe, the macro. We're talking about him as a human. This is why as a two, this is such fucking good. This is, this is so good because yes, right? This is your life. This is your battle. And just to make that $1,000, bro, just to hustle to make a little bit. I am grateful every time. I'm able to pay my bills because I know a Britney that wasn't even able to do that. I know a Britney that was so stressed and so broken down and such a mess. She was lying. So she couldn't pay rent on time. She was lying at jobs. She was being, un, you know, just unreliable. She wasn't the greatest person. She was struggling so hard until she made the decision to be somebody different because she needed to. This is key. Whether you're two or five, there's a need element. So it's not that I needed to suffer but I needed to need to not suffer. It's not that I needed to suffer. I needed to not need to suffer. Lots of people are content in their suffering. They're content in their complacency. They're content in their toxicity. They're con content in their misery. Not literally content, not truly content, but enough that they won't make the decision to change. But David Goggins and people in his category, mm-mm. Mm -mm. And then you got to keep practicing it. It will go away if you don't practice it. It will go away. Introspection and going to the gym will go away if you do not practice it. You have to practice being introspective. You have to practice by going to the gym. Like your muscles will fade away. Your introspection will fade away. It is a practice. And life, don't worry, is such a struggle that it will give you opportunities to practice every fucking day. So you don't even have to worry about it. You don't have to seek it out. You just got to live a life that's meaningful and it will naturally give you opportunities to be introspective. It will give you opportunities to build muscle. It will give you opportunities to build things. Oh, this is so good. This is so good, dude. Kay saying, he's saying that introspection is a constant practice in every single moment. Absolutely. Whether you're two or five, introspection is absolutely a thing you have to practice at every moment. It is so, or every moment that you want to, right? But yes, Mwah. 
beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And that's the guy that I'm constantly fighting every day. And it's a choice. Mm. And that choice makes you misunderstood. It makes you cool. Don't I always say my only competition is myself? The guy he's fighting is himself. People who are in competition with themselves playing a different game than people that are always in competition with others. Crazy. That's why I hate fucking social media. In 2013, people wanted me to write my book. I did it in 2018. It took five years. And the reason why I didn't do it, I set a table and Jennifer was there. This is before I, I, she started working for me. I started dating or whatever. And all these people were there. And they're like, man, you got to go on social media. And I was like, fuck you, man. Like, I'm not, that's, it's, it's poison. Okay, I'm dying to know, just preemptively, if he did it himself. Because I'm really struggling. Obviously, I know I could brand myself. I know I could get myself up in numbers. I'm just really struggling to make the TikToks, to make the things. YouTube's going great. But, like, to have the spoons to make the TikToks. And also, like, but that's how David Goggins also got really popular. So I'm curious, did he do it or did somebody else do it for him? That's what I'm, did he edit the TikToks? Did he make them all himself? Or did somebody do it for him? Because I have nobody who's going to do it for me, right? I have to do it, which means I have control over whether or not I get more popular, whether or not I focus on social media. Like I have the control, which is good. But I wonder if David made the choice or if somebody made it for him. So let's see. It's poison because I knew what I did to get where I am. And I'm going to have these people, these normal everyday people, fat, lazy, is exactly who I was, judging me. Because mm. I know it. Because I was once them. All my hard work, all my dedication, I'm going to have some normal dude get his little brownies, little ding-dong, ho-ho, twinkie, sit there with his coffee, picking me apart. At, oh, he must be unhappy. He's just, do you know how hard it is to put these shoes on every damn morning and I'm going to have you pick me apart? Mm. So, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's so much that goes into this that I was like, fuck this. I never want anything to do with it. So, anyway. I'm not a psychologist, mm -hmm. but knowing your story from what you've written, what you've said on social media and elsewhere podcast, and right. here now especially. Right. It's amazing to me, mm -hmm. and frankly, it pulls at my heartstrings a little bit. I realize that's not what you're trying to do, but that in the course of your childhood and in your young adulthood, mm -hmm. that no one ever got between you and the world. No. I forget where I heard it, that like if a kid has just one person that believes in them, right. you know, and I had my trials and tribulations, but I had great coaches, great mentors. Right. I attached to them. I found them if they didn't necessarily find mm -hmm. me. Right. But I'm realizing that your situation was no one's ever said, hey, I'm going to stand here next to you or get in front of you, right. put a shield up. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like you've got these different ver – it's all you, but there's versions of yourself – that like you knew social media, like I don't know that I have the wherewithal in 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17 right. to get in front of myself while doing all this because I've already got so much going on in here. Right. Is that about right? That is right, but I had developed a lot of anger and I still have it. And it will never go away Ooh. for the normal human beings of this world. Because when you put yourself in the sewer like I was in, and please, if someone saved me, come out and announce it to the world. There's no one. There's no one. So when you know that, and then I'm sitting at the table with all these smart people who are telling me what to do and shit and guiding me through my life now, when I'm 40 fucking years old, you know, two thousand, I don't know, 40 something years old, now I'm 49. And I'm looking at them all and they're, and they're now trying to guide me on what's right, on this poison. And so, yeah, what you say is right. But for me, it was more of, I know now. I don't need you to guide my future. I know what's good for me and what's bad for me. And for me, it took every bit of focus I could. And I know social media, that's why people love to go on there because they want to show you the good side of life. I'm not teaching good side of life. Hmm. So I had to figure out a way when I came on in 2016 of teaching you what life really is for the majority of us is hell. And so hmm. while people love to show you the cars and the house and the vacations and shit, all that's good. All that's happy. I'm going to show you the side that I know most of you are going through. And people hide very well. I don't want to hide anymore. I hid for 24 fucking years. Hmm. So that's why now I told you, we can talk about whatever you want. Because as human beings, the one we, the, the first thing we have to learn, I also studied real bad growing up. So if you hear me study every now and then, it's because that was part of my life also. So, so this is the part of his introspection journey where I would want to know, has he gone to therapy? Has he fixed his, like, why does he have that opinion on anger issues? Why does he feel like no one was there for him? Because I am curious about that a little bit. Right now, I think he's strictly talking about getting up and doing things every day. But I don't know, like, I couldn't say that I've built myself up by myself. I've had mentors, family and friends, good people in my life. I've had lots of opportunities. I've had good coworkers. I've had um, people that believed in me. I've had an audience. Like, I don't feel like I did it by myself. I feel like I do a lot of things by myself. I think my life is about me. But I couldn't say I did it alone. 
but it sounds like he feels like he did it alone. And then my question would be like, does he feel that way about his career? Does he feel that way about writing that book? Does he feel that way about his social media presence? Like, did he do it alone? Did his, like, did nobody else, like, did he do it alone? So what does that mean? I want to know more about his anger. I want to know if he went to therapy. I don't really believe like once angry, always angry. I don't personally believe that. Like I know as a person who was formerly much angrier than I am now, I absolutely have gotten better. You know what I mean? So I am curious about that as well. Um, there does seem to be a lot of like conflict, but I'm not sure where that's coming from. I'm sure if it's the passion, you know what I mean? <laughs> Hotep says, you don't get it, Brittany. He is the therapy. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Abby says, how much more popular would you want to get from TikTok? That is not how my brain works. My brain does not. That's why I don't do social media marketing. I don't think that way. That's why I am more the creator than the, the marketer. I don't think how much more popular would you want to get from TikTok? I've tried to think that way. It doesn't work. Like I used to say like maybe 500,000 subscribers, maybe this. It's not that. It's none of that matters to me. What matters to me is that I'm sustaining a life. I'm sustaining a career. I'm saving up for retirement. So it's not like how much more popular do you want to get? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't know. Like as popular as I need to sustain a lifestyle and and sustain my retirement. Like, I don't know what that means. Right. Like I'm my brain just doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? Interesting. Um, Phoenix says, do you really have an OF or is that a joke? No, I'm very sex positive. I'm very pro nude. I have an amazing OF. You should definitely subscribe to it. It's doing great. Thank you for asking. Um, let me see. Um, Shadow B says, I'm always suspicious when people say they're entirely self-made or I've never had help. Me too. So I'm a little bit, now we're in the suspicious zone. Hmm, interesting. Ania says, it's very exhausting to engage with my anger, but it's still there. I tried to let it go. Um... Girl, I cannot say that word to save my life. Damn it. Uh, but think, shitty things will get to me. I will say like, look, I used to be very angry and I used to lash out, but I've just been like, I have a firmness and aggression to me, but I'm not, I'm not in any way as angry as I was like five years ago. There's just like not, there's like a totally different person. So I really believe in that change. So I, I really want to see where he's gone in that regard. So let's see what he, what, let's see where he goes with this because, mm. Oh, it's funny, human beings want to show you the best side and they want to hide the worst side. For me, I'm going to teach you how to be vulnerable because that's the only way you fix yourself. You don't fix yourself by coming out here and me selling you some fucking books. That's why I don't have them. I forgot them. I'm glad people got something from the book. I want you to learn that the only way you grow is how to look at yourself and say, okay, like I did. Table longer than this. What the fuck I have to do to get somewhere? There was nothing good on there. Nothing. Yeah, I love playing basketball. I left that out. That's something I love to do. I don't care about that. that. That didn't make the fucking list. Because the list that I had to live by was a, was a very list that was to get me at this table with you. To talk to you, to the normal human beings which I once was, about how you can get somewhere and how it looks. It looks very ugly. There's no fucking passion. There's no fucking motivation. There's no, oh my God, man, I fucking, this is, no. It's every day of your life just doing. No passion. No discipline. No motivation. All these words, I hate people. I hate that so many people fucking use these words because it, it, it's watered. It's someone sitting in a room by themselves and they figure themselves out and say, God, this is going to fucking suck. Where's passion when you're 300 pounds? Where's the motivation when you can't read and write? Where is it? So how did this happen? I just fucking did. I just did. I said, mm. maybe at the end of this journey, there'll be something there. He's losing me now. Now he's losing me. But to be fair, in the two bubble, this is pretty good. He is exceptional. So definitely not what I'm not getting like five vibes, but I'm getting like a two very introspective to who has a lot of struggle and is still dealing with anger vibes. Okay. For me. If not, I can read. If not, I'm 185 fucking pounds. There's no, there's, there's, there's no magic potion. There's no, oh, let me wake up and look at some shit. No, all those words are overused. They're bullshit. It's all bullshit. Just do. You're living. How do you want to live? How do you want to die? How do you want to fucking be remembered? Okay. Mm. That's, that's it. Okay. That's it. Period. As many of you know, I've been taking AG1 daily since 2012, so I'm delighted that they're sponsoring the podcast. AG1 is a vitamin mineral probiotic. The word haunted mm -hmm. is ringing in my head. Yep. I think it's a couple of weeks. It's 2002. Times means adaptogen. It also, if you'd like to try, year supply is ringing in my head. Yep. Haunted. I think it's such a powerful word. Yep. Because I was about to say, it seems like a huge part of your process, maybe the entire process, is it's all stick, no carrot. You know, you talk about yep. the carrot, the positive thing, and then there's the stick, the thing you're trying to avoid. Yep. I feel like it's, the way it's landing for me mm -hmm. is, 
it's all stick and gas pedal. Is it? There's no carrot. You're not imagining, oh, when I'm a paramedic, when yep. the book is published. And obviously you set those goals and you make those targets. Yep. But it's all stick. All stick. No carrot. Think about that. I'm waking up right now studying, like I have a test tomorrow. I already passed the fucking test. Think about that. Every day of my life. That's what I must do just to retain what I learned. Four hours plus a day, I go through and do that. There's no stick. Or there's only a stick. There's never been a carrot. Which is why when I speak to people, I have to figure out a way to resonate with them. Because all I want to say to them is, let me teach you the real life, how it really is. The reason why you're a loser and the reason why you're not fucking making it and the reason why you're trying to go to all these, I go to all these fucking conventions, speak all the fucking time. I look in the fucking audience and these people sign up, sign up, sign up fucking every year to go to a convention thinking they're going to learn something fucking different. No, you're lazy. You know exactly what to do, exactly what to do. Because even me, in my state of, I can't read and write, I know exactly what to do. It just sucks doing it. It sucks to do it. It sucks to wake up every morning of your life and say, God, man, I'm, I'm not smart. Okay, I will say it is very true that all the answers are already out there. It doesn't matter how many like conventions you go to or how many books you read. Like you just have to read the right ones and it has to hit your brain. The reason you consume a lot is to find the right person sending you the right message to make it click in your brain. So sometimes when people like the best messages I get from people are like, oh my gosh, Brittany, you just said it in the way and I finally get it. And I'm like, cool, because that's all we're looking for. All the answers are out there in the universe. All we're looking for as individuals is the right way to consume the same information. No original ideas are happening. There's nothing I'm going to say to you that's any different than anybody else. We're all looking for different things to find a specific um, uh, journey, to go down a certain specific journey. It's not even about a goal, even though you can argue it's a goal. It's about how do I go on this specific journey? So again, moving into 2024, we're talking about lifestyle. What's the lifestyle that we're having a conversation about that we want to have in our life? What's the lifestyle? So David Goggins has a specific lifestyle that is about having a disciplined relationship or an overcoming with the brain that he was given as a child. And I think that's fine. I think my journey coincides with that, obviously, but I'm obviously very interested in like the universe and life and objective truth and all these things that are outside of our perception. And so I'm I'm reaching for something a little bit different, but I would say the journey is the same because you still have to have that discipline. You still have to wake up every day. And in order to do the things you want, you still have to do so much of what he's already saying. So he's right. Like it doesn't matter how many conferences you go to. It doesn't matter how many like, you know, like Michelle Fawn joining that, that guy's group about healing people spiritually. Okay. Like, Yes, that might be the answer, but it's probably not the answer. It depends on the the journey you're hoping to go down. But you can choose your life. You get to choose your reality. So ask yourself why you're choosing the one you're choosing. David Goggins feels like he's choosing the one he's choosing because of the tools he was given. I feel like I'm choosing the one I'm choosing regardless of the tools that I was given because I'm going to get the tools to have the life I want. So it's about seeking more tools. So somewhat of David Goggins' work so far sounds like how to make the best with what you have and my work is how to have the life you want regardless of the hand you were given, which might be the same thing, but I don't think so. What do you guys think? Do you think that's accurate or no? Do you think I messed something up? Um, Charles says, I think he assumes everyone can just do it like he can. When I suspect his rough childhood plays a role in his ability to endure. Well, he did say that some people have like completely different cases where it's like not going to work the same. And he is saying you should find the way that works for you. But he's saying it is hard and he's trying to reach out to a larger audience that I think I don't think I don't know if he knows like maybe he's arguing that the most of the world is neurodivergent, but I don't know if he recognizes that his neurodivergency actually makes him quite different than the neurotypical, even though he seemed to acknowledge it. So if he's just talking to neurodivergence, I do think he's probably going to help them and then hinder them. But I really do think people with neurodivergency have a lot of like they say they have a lot of trauma growing up because of the way society treated them and I do think David Goggins sounds like somebody who probably needs some therapy but I'm not sure if he's ever had it so maybe I could be wrong again to be a whole human being I think your therapy your philosophy those are two different things you know so there's something here that's missing I feel for me you know I think he focuses on the individual where you focus on the macro more no, I focus, I'm an individual. I focus on the individual, but my levels takes you to the macro. But my, my work is only about the individual. That's why my callers are twos and fives. That's why my audience is twos and fives. 
because like my my work is about the individual, but his work is about the individual who's only thinking about this specific way of being because he keeps saying his work is about the individual, but he keeps saying this is what I think most people are going through, but I don't think that's true. I don't think most people are fighting every day to gather spoons. I think most people are fighting every day to find meaning in their life. And right now, to be fair, he's not a philosopher. I'm not hearing much philosophy. I think he's describing a meaning crisis. But if he's describing, the, if his audience was just neurodivergent, then his content would make more sense to me. But now he's talking about how like everyone has this and everyone can overcome. But who's this everyone? Who is it? You know what I mean? Like, who is he talking to? Yui says he grew up in a household where his father repeatedly physically abused his mother. He says his father absolutely stole and shattered his mother's soul. And that um, and that of him and his siblings also. Yeah, I think I think like that's a therapy issue, right? So I wonder if he's gotten help for that because it's not like and most people aren't like that, right? Most people don't have that background. Most people aren't living in a life where like I never saw my dad hit my mom. My dad never hit my mom growing up. That's a very unique lifestyle. You know what I mean? Oh, that's kind of what I meant. He doesn't touch on the macro where you do. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sorry. In that regard, obviously, he's not thinking about the macro. But even when, even so, his framing, I think, is incorrect to say, like, most people are like me. No, nope, most people don't have your upbringing. It's a very ADHD and a father who beat his mother. That's not normal. What normal is that, right? So guess what I got to do? I got I to gotta study the same shit that I got one of the highest scores in the nation on. And do it again. Do it again. Do it again. It's not just there. It's not just there permanently for me. So yeah, it's all stick. It's all stick. The only carrot you have is like, maybe, maybe. Because whenever I take these tests that are real hard, in the back of my brain, it's like, it's a good chance you're not gonna make it, Dawkins. This ain't you, bro. This ain't you. You weren't born like this. This ain't you, the real you, bro. Study all you want to, but the second that fucking computer comes on with 150 questions, this ain't you, man. And somehow, it comes back, I passed. I passed again, I passed again. That real me back here every fucking time is saying, that ain't you, bro. Hmm. That ain't you. And I have to outwork that voice. When I'm taking that test and I get to a question, I don't fucking know the answer. I'm like, fuck, man. And then say, I told you, man, that ain't you. You're 300 pounds, man. You sit at home, you figure out how to do your hair. That's what you do. How to come to school with the reverse baldness when you're 16. That's, what, that, that's, that's you. So there is no get out of jail free card. This is why I say stay hard. Because when you weren't given the gifts, the only thing you can do in life is stay hard. And I know people cannot stand me. They can't stand this talk. This is all you can do. There's no magic pill. That's what I don't like. It's very limiting. So that's fine. So this is a two thinking. Two thinking is very limiting, which is fine because it's within the bubble's context, which is fine, like no problem. But like this is all you can do is stay hard. When this is your life, this is all you can do. And I'm like, okay, okay. Mm. Okay. Hmm. Or, or a magic potion. All you can do is outwork the man that God created or woman in you. And what that looks like is unfun. That's why I said, do not do a documentary on me. Because people will not see the truth. They will see what they want to see. I don't want to live like that. Hmm. Good. Good. And you will live exactly the way you live now. Questioning who you are. Wondering what is possible. Wondering what you are capable of doing. That's how that looks. Hmm. Or you can be me, which, am I happy? I don't know. Nobody thought about it. Nobody cared about it. Because all I really cared about was when I looked in that fucking mirror, I saw a piece of shit. Happiness wasn't on the mirror at 16. Or around 300 pounds. It wasn't like, oh my, I'm looking for happiness. No, I'm looking, looking at myself in the mirror and say, all right, motherfucker, you did it again today. You're a bad boy. Because that shit sucks. I have about a couple minutes of that when I got the carrot. Second lay down to go to bed, the carrot's gone because I'm waking up all through the night to check the work I did that day. Did I get this drug right? Did I get this right? Did I get that right? What did I do? Oh my God, fuck. I'm, I'm already losing it. It's a stick. Hmm. That stick is haunting you. Haunting. It's, it's following you around. Mm -hmm. So no picture of Jordan on the wall. You're not listening to YouTube inspiration video. No. That would be all your voice anyway. <laughs> uh, you're not uh, listening to your top 10 favorite songs just to get rolling and then lace the shoes, hit the books. You're, it's all in here. All in there. I used to do that when I was fat. Rocky, I mean, that, that was my thing. Uh, round 14 mm. was my thing. And as I got older and older and older, that started to go away. And I started to create... I had all these people that I used to watch. Rocky was one, Barnes, Elias from Platoon, um, Jack from A Few Good Men. You know, he's on the stand going crazy. I saw a lot of these characters that I looked at and I was like, man, I ain't got none of that. But they were characters. After a while, 
I lived a life so disciplined that everybody that I once looked to, these fake characters, I, I, I built it as a man. And when I was younger, I had this image in my mind of what does a man look like to me? Hmm. And I got all these people who were badasses, characters. And in my mind, I became that. And that's what kept me going a lot, was I had this pipe dream of becoming a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Because when you have no parents raising you and you have no role models growing up, you, it's not daydreaming. You start to create a reality like, hmm, maybe I can be that. And after becoming this guy, that is the biggest thing I can ever do in my life is I became that guy. That I once looked at all these guys, now I look at myself like, God, who the fuck can do that? I can. But what it takes is a, a discipline that no one can ever even, they, they, just don't, they don't understand it. Hmm. They don't understand it. Everybody has the ability to do it, but they just don't want to. They want to keep asking. Everybody has the ability to do it, but they just don't want to. And I think that is the fault in his thinking. I don't know if he literally means it because I just don't – like that's impossible, right? He's married. He has, he's been in a relationship. He's married. Um, he's been doing this for like 20-something years, right? He seems – I think he's just missing the reality that like, nope, you're the only Goggins, bro. Like he doesn't want to see himself as exceptional, but he is exceptional. He sees himself as neurodivergent and limited, but also like he can overcome it. Like no offense, like an ADHD brain is very different than other people who don't have ADHD. Like they're just like they're different on that in that way as well. And so I think I like in general that he's telling people to face themselves. That's beautiful. I think this is where he's losing me. It's this idea of like everyone can do it. And I'm like, oh, no. I think instead you should be the strongest version of you, whatever that is, and don't compare yourself to David Goggins, right? Don't try to be David Goggins. Try to be the best, most efficient version of you because it can't look the same. I can't be David Goggins. I don't even have testosterone. Like, and I think he said that too, be the best version of you. But when he says everyone else can do this, I hope he means everyone else can be introspective. Everyone else can be disciplined. Everyone else can face themselves. Then I agree. I think everyone is capable unless you're in a coma or you have brain damage. I think everyone is capable who has the capabilities of doing this, okay? To be introspective, to be self-disciplined, to to be in control of their lives. I do believe that. So I think that's probably his message, right? Is that not that you're capable of being David Goggins, but that you're capable of being the best, most disciplined version of you. Definitely think that's probably true. Discord says, I kind of like this guy. There's something appealing about a man who has values, even if I don't quite agree with them. There's a simple honesty to him. I can see how he is good for the people he reaches. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he probably won't burn out like a normal person, um, maybe in an ADHD way, like a neurodivergent way he might, but he probably also gets spoons from the things that he's doing. So, okay. MEH says, the thing that bothers me is this feels like a trauma response. Um, I agree. That is the one thing that is bothering me as well is it does feel like a trauma response. There's truth that he's not in peace or joy, which makes me kind of sad. Yeah, I agree with that. That's the one part of this that I'm like, oh, he seems, this does seem like a trauma cope. And at the same time, what do I always say? The right amount of dysfunction will lead you to major success in your life, financially, but not usually philosophy or spiritually. The right amount of dysfunction will make you rich. I have a very strong theory about this. The right amount of dysfunction will lead you to wisdom and the right amount of dysfunction will lead you to poverty. There is something about dysfunction where like the right amount will lead you to rich, the right amount will lead you to introspection and the right amount, like I would say wisdom, but less, uh, you know, philosophy, whatever, peace within the self, the consciousness. And then one's going to lead you to poverty. The, he has the one that leads him to money. I'm not sure he found the one that leads him to having the best relationship with his consciousness. He has an introspective tool, but he doesn't have a peace with his consciousness. And I think if he got it, he probably would stop doing exactly what he's doing. Right? Kay says, I feel like when he says no one wants to, he means anyone can literally do it. Like you have the free will to do it, but not everyone will have the other internal factors aligned in a degree that they will feel capable of or satisfied enough to then choose to do the thing they need to do when they say they want it. Um, yeah, but that kind of contradicts what he said earlier when he was like, all these people who are looking at me and think they know what I'm doing, they're not, they don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, but that's because they don't even have it within them uh, to know that that's what they're missing. That's why when people are like, do you think people should be fives? Why? That's like me saying like, do you think people should all love strawberry cake? Why? No. I think I've let go of that attachment 
to the idea that everyone wants what I want, everyone needs what I want or needs, or that everyone is like me. Everyone is like me in the sense that they want something that they want, but I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? So as long as like he's saying that people have the ability to go down whatever path they want, I agree with that for the most part. I just don't think everyone needs to need it. Like I think that's the attachment I've let go of because twos really think like people should be like them. And if they're not, they're losers. And I don't think people should be like me. I think you should be like you. You know what I mean? The only way I could consider you a loser is through my own morals and mindset, which is different, right? Shadow B says, if he keeps this mindset, he'll never be satisfied with his life. But I think he's scared of being satisfied and maybe thinks it's the same as complacency. I think a lot of people do end up looking that way. Like, I do think that I can't explain to you, like, the moment I felt like I had a really good relationship with my consciousness, like, things changed um motivation change desire for materialism changed a need to cope by by like consuming things changed um and i think that can stifle like uh you know running every day what if he becomes fat again because he you know what i mean who knows but i don't know i don't know i don't know you know SB says, do you think more creations should like hot Cheetos so they'd have them? I think Europe should change its policies on food. It's not Croatia. It's Europe. They have a problem. Or at least I think it's Europe. They have a stand. It's because it has cancer. Hot Cheetos have cancer. They have the red dye 40. A lot of American food is cancerous, bros. The rest of the world is smart not to have it in their countries. <laughs> Even if I miss it. Asking questions and keep going to seminars. And the greatness is right in you. And that's why, once again, I'll say this a million times here. I do not feel sorry for you. I will not sugarcoat what I'm going to say to you. Because all of you know what I'm saying is the truth. Everybody knows the truth. This is what it looks like. And you know what, too? You know what, too? This is what, if, if you ain't got nothing, I hate to tell you, what it looks like is ugly. It's not a documentary. It's not an HBO special. You ain't going to watch it. Hey, man, you guys got to watch this. No, it's like, oh, God, this looks like a train wreck. It's like a nightmare. This looks like this guy got, no. That's what it looks like. Hard work looks horrible. It's not motivating. It's not motivating at all. It ain't like Rocky round 14. He gets knocked down. He goes like this. I think that's the only thing is like, I do think it's motivating, but he's right. I bet if I filmed my little breakdowns or if I filmed like how hard I want to cry when I'm working out, I'm sure people would be like, oh, this isn't motivational. But I think it is. There's a girl on TikTok who everybody loves because she looks like she's in so much pain when she works out. And it's so relatable. I love her. Every time she looks like she's in pain, I just want to be like, thank you. Because I look so... I look awful when I work out. I just like I'm so much pain. I'm so ugly. And I'm just sitting here like this sucks. And I'm doing it anyways. And I think like some people want to watch videos where it's not like that. You know what I mean? So I think there that's a part of it. You know what I mean? Where I think he's trying to say it's not pretty to look at. And I do agree. I don't think it's very pretty. But I do think it's really lovely all the same. I think it's beautiful. That it's not perfect. You know what I mean? Me doing yoga, literally same. But me when I'm doing yoga on camera, sometimes like I know I put myself on camera so people feel better because I fall all the time. But bro, I feel like I look so ugly. You know what I mean? Um, but I appreciate that he knows himself well enough to be this successful and this determined. I think that's really important, you know? I do. I do. Jessica, I also want cake now. We gotta stop talking about cake, bros. I'm gonna make some bread later. That's what I'm excited about. I'm making some more cheese bread today. Mr. Apollo Creed, it looks like a man being stuck in a fucking dungeon <gasps> and there's no fucking way out. Oh. But you have the fucking key. But you refuse to use it. And Ooh, the cupcake! He's talking about the cupcake. Wait, let's rewind. That's Apollo Creed, it looks like a man being stuck in a fucking dungeon and there's no fucking way out. But you have the fucking key. That's the cupcake. Mine is a cupcake because I'm a girl. His is a key. Mine's a cupcake. You're in the desert. Okay. You're starving. Someone comes along and goes, here, you can eat a cupcake. And you go, mm, no. And it's like, what? Now, he thinks most people are doing this. I think uh, everyone's probably doing this to a degree in their life. But specifically, ones never eat the cupcake, right? They never eat the cupcake, even though people are handing it to them. He's he's using this as an example for everyone. I think that's true on a spectrum, whatever that means. Lots of people deny eating the cupcake lots of times in their life, right? But, okay, 
specifically ones never eat the cupcake. Most people eat the cupcake most, most of the time. But his is a key. He's saying you're in the jail cell. You feel imprisoned. You have the key. Open it up. I can't. I can't. I can't. Same with the cupcake. You're dr- you're starving in the desert. Someone comes along, and gives you a cupcake and you refuse to eat it. It's like, bro, eat the fucking cupcake, bro. But you refuse to use it. And that's not motivating about that. So, yes, no documentary on David Goggins. The real life. The real David life. Goggins is the is the documentary. It's all it's already being written. Hmm. You're it. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna share a little neuroscience tidbit, Love it. but I think it's one that you'll appreciate. Um, most people don't know this, but there's a brain structure called the anterior mid cingulate cortex. As we pointed out before, that's a noun. It's a name. It doesn't mean anything. Right. We could call Ooh. it the, the cookie monster. Right. But what's interesting about this brain area is there are now a lot of data mm-hmm. in humans, not some mouse study, showing that when people do something they don't want to do, mm-hmm. like add three hours of exercise per day or per week, or when people who are trying to diet and lose weight resist eating something. Right. When people do anything that they, and this is the important part, that they don't want to do. Right. It's not about adding more work. It's about adding more work that you don't want to do. Yes. Mm. This brain area gets bigger. Yep. Now, here's what's especially interesting about this brain area to me. And by the way, I'm only learning this recently mm-hmm. because it's new data, but there's a lot of it. The anterior mid cingulate cortex is smaller in obese people. Mm-hmm. It gets bigger when they diet. Mm-hmm. It's larger in athletes. Mm-hmm. It's especially large or grows larger in people that see themselves as challenged and overcome some challenge. Right. Mm-hmm. And in people that live a very long time, mm-hmm. This area re- keeps its size. Mm-hmm. In many ways, scientists are starting to think of the anterior mid cingulate cortex not just as one of the seats of willpower, right. but perhaps actually the seat of the will to live. See, now we're talking. And when I learned about the anterior mid cingulate cortex, I was like almost out of my seat. And I've been in the neuroscience game since I was 20. Now we're the we're same talking. age. And I was so pumped because I've heard of the amygdala, fear, prefrontal cortex, it's planning and action. I could tell you every brain area and every, I teach neuroanatomy to medical students. But when I started seeing the data on the anterior mid cingulate cortex, I was like, whoa, this is interesting. Yep. And all the data point to the fact that we can build this area up, yep. but that as quickly as we build it up, if we don't continue to invest in things that are hard for us, that we don't want to do, that's the mm. part that feels so Goggin-esque yes. to mm. me that we don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Like if you love the ice bath, yeah, I love the ice bath. You go from one minute to 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Your anterior mid cingulate cortex did not grow. None. But if you hate the cold water, mm-hmm. if you're f- afraid of drowning mm-hmm. and you get into water and put your head under, yep. then your anterior mid and survive, then the anterior mid cingulate cortex gets bigger. Nice. But if you don't do it the next day, Or if you do it the next day and you enjoy it, because, hey, hey, I did it yesterday. This is why hedonism is my biggest fear. Not literally, not that I know, understand the science of this. But I will say, like, hedonism feels so self-defeating for somebody like me. Because if you're just being hedonistic, for me, I know that I'm being lazy and complicit and I'm not growing as a person or a thinker. I also think it would drive me crazy because I need the challenge. I live for the challenge. That's why I think I love working because as long as the work is challenging, then I am very satisfied. But of course, it also has to be challenging in a way that gives me spoons and actually like makes me feel stimulated. So that's one of the dilemmas is like, okay, what's gonna be hard? What's going to be challenging and what's going to make me want to problem solve this thing? I actually think like I'm so this is going to sound so dumb. I'm so grateful for my fibro diagnosis right now. I wasn't in the beginning, obviously, but I'm at the stage right now where I'm very grateful for it because I'm actually working out and I've always wanted to work out my whole life, but it was always too hard. And in some ways I'm cheating because I don't want to feel my fibro pain. I work out and because I have to work out, I have to challenge myself And there's something about it that I'm actually like, I was so grateful for my fibro yesterday. I was like, thank God I have fibro so I can actually work out. Did you guys see that Instagram post I posted of my muscle mommy arms? I know I'm just beginning. I know it's baby steps. I know I'm not anywhere near where I want to be. But the fact that I can see something, some definition, I'm like, my whole life I've wanted this. My whole life I've said to myself, I'm going to be a working out person, never could do it. And now I have this reason to do it, which is sort of cheating. And I can do it now because it makes my fibro so much better. And even though I'm not perfect, I'm not like, you know, the most like heavy, you know, weightlifter ever, you know, I'm doing very baby weights. It's one of those things where it's, I'm just like so grateful. It sounds so stupid to be like, I think I have fibro. Like I'm so grateful, but I am, I'm super grateful, but I do need that challenge. And I think I've been that way since I was a kid. And I think I've been that, um, I've just been, that's how I've, experience that motivation right is challenge and then getting that dopamine from that challenge or whatever you want to call it but yeah i think this is kind of like really good news you know what i mean i'm stoked i'm stoked yesterday woo-hoo. happy me merry christmas is right, merry christmas guess what the anterior mid cortex shrinks again yep to me this is one of the most important discoveries that neuroscience has ever made mm-hmm. 
because it's that I don't want to do something, but do it anyway. That's right. That grows this area. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like I have a friend, he's been sober 30 years from alcohol. Mm -hmm. And he always says, you know, the amazing thing about addiction is there's a cure. The problem is it only works one day at a time. Yep. And so you have to renew it every day. That's right. I never forgot I was on a podcast one time and this dude goes, you were blessed with a strong mind. Like, what the hell are you talking about? I was blessed with a strong mind. You, mm. That's something that you have to develop. You develop that over. I don't actually, okay. I do think people are born with personality types. And I, is David Goggins a Taurus? I don't want to be that girl, but I feel like, you know what I mean? I think some people are born with certain kinds of personalities and I don't think we can all do what we can all do. I don't. I don't think I can be as calm and comforting as some people can be calm and comforting. And I think that's because of my personality. And I don't even think I could train it. I don't. When I say a softness, you ever meet a person who's soft? Really soft? I'm not that person. Fuck you. But also love that. So David Goggins, I think, makes the mistake of knowing he overcame so much and I think he's his language is making it sound like there's no uniqueness or diversity or nuance in the human um, brain or personality. And I just want to say it is. You know what I mean? It is. Okay. Years, decades of suffering and going back into the suffer. That's why a lot of people who graduate Navy SEAL training, they want to know, like, in my, I talk about it very openly all the time. A lot of guys don't. Oh, David Goggins, February 17th. He's a Pisces, right? He's a Pisces, right? Did February 17th, somebody help me out here. Go, don't don't want to go back into that water. Don't want to go back into the hard stuff. And maybe not anything, anything hard. Anything hard in life. Once you get through it, it's like you become a POW. Like how many POWs you know want to go back to POW camp? None. When something sucks so bad. Yeah, bro, you probably have PTSD or CPTSD from your life. Does he know that? You know what I'm saying? He probably does have like trauma from his life. It makes, you know what I mean? Which is... A part of his kind of, again, I really, guys, I don't mean to say this this way. I really do think with the right amount of dysfunction, you become incredibly successful or you become incredibly non-successful. And I think Goggins is not realizing like your personality with your level of dysfunction and your level of choice actually built your success. A lot of people aren't going to be like that. Bad in life. This is on this that we're talking about now. Very few people want to go back. They're happy they graduated. I realized I'm the same way. I don't want to go back. I have to go back. I must go back because that is exactly where all the knowledge of my life exists was back there and what you're exactly talking about. Well, I didn't know anything about this, but how I grew a will was constantly doing these things to now. It's just life. I wake up while it still sucks. It's just life. You don't sit back and like, oh my God, like I have days I don't want to do, but I know I'm going to do it. I know from years of just doing it. So I, that, that's, that's beautiful. And this is why I came on here. <gasps> That's an Aquarius? Oh, February 17th is Aquarius. Okay, what is an Aquarius? What does this mean? I'm, I'm glad you're talking about this because human beings need to hear this. They need to okay. stop hearing these hacks on this and that. There's no fucking hack, bro. There's no fucking hack. Yeah. I will say a lot of people who are like working out TikTokers, they are constantly like telling women they're going to build glutes with five pound weights. You're probably not going to build glutes with five pound weights guys like you know what I mean that's probably not gonna happen so I will say there's a lot of like false information out there especially from influencers that you're gonna change your life with five, five pound weights you're probably not gonna change your life with five, five pound weights but you're gonna change something in terms of routine and discipline so maybe that's really what they're teaching you but I will say that I think that's the false city of social media that's really frustrating is you know, and that's why they say like pay for it. So you know what you're paying for. But even when you're paying for it, you don't always get the right answers from the people you're paying, you know, you're paying into. Okay. Discord says Aquarius, January 20th to February 18th. Okay. Aquarians are independent and unconventional. They often express themselves in unique ways and are interested in the well-being of society as a whole, often showing a somewhat detached but friendly demeanor. That's him in a nutshell. Bro, that's totally him. That's totally him. You may this and that and saunas and, this and all this shit that they, yeah, it's great. There is no fucking life hack to grow that thing. How do you grow it? Do it and do it and do it and do it. That's the hack. The hack is going to fucking suck. And that's what I realized. That's what I realized. Life, that's why I wanted to come on here today. I didn't want to come on here and talk about no fucking passion and purpose and how to get the fuck out of bed and how to hit a fucking alarm clock and all this catchphrase bullshit. Cause that wasn't how I lived. That wasn't how I lived. I lived, I woke up like every human being does and goes, fuck man, 
I'm a fucking piece of shit today. How the hell is this going to work out for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, he keeps doing that thing where he's trying to be relatable, but this isn't relatable. Waking up every day and thinking you're a piece of shit, like no offense, that is not the everyday experience of everyone. I think we all have times in our lives where we feel like pieces of shit, but I don't think a majority of people are literally waking up every day and thinking like, I'm a piece of shit, bro. Like that's not the lived experience of a lot of people. So he does make these generalizations which make me detach from him and what he's saying. But if he just said, um, it's not a big deal, it's semantics, but if he just said like some people, some of us, those of us who do this, like he's he didn't come from a normal background. He came from an incredibly specific bubble. His abuse, his trauma, all that stuff. I'm not hearing anything about therapy. There better be something about therapy in here. Is there something about therapy in here? Hmm. And you fight that. And you fight that. You don't override it. No override button. It's the conversation in your fucking, like, in your head. So how do you do that? We don't have enough of these conversations about the real conversation that every human being is having. And they have no idea how to get out of it, but they do. It's that shit right there, man. You gotta build your will. How do you build your will? Exactly what you said, man. Exactly what you said. Well, I feel like knowing the name of something, anterior mid cingulate cortex, doesn't fundamentally change us. But one thing I like about biology mm -hmm. is that willpower, if somebody feels they don't have it, right. feels like this thing that other people have, but everybody, unless they're brain damaged, like a hole right. through their head, has two anterior mid cingulate cortex, one on each side of their brain. Everyone has one. Mm -hmm. They have two. So I feel like it's just a question of opening the portal. And the portal, what I, again, I've been to say 10 times and forgive me, is I think people go, oh, I do hard things. I do sets to failure and then I do force reps. I love training with weights. Mm -hmm. I love doing sets to failure. I even like force reps, but guess what? I like force reps. So I can, I'll tell you, they don't build my anterior mid cingulate mm -hmm. cortex because right. I like to do it. That's right. Anything you like to do is not going to enhance this aspect of willpower. Mm -hmm. And it seems so obvious once you hear it, you kind of go, oh yeah, of course. But I think you really close that loop for people mm -hmm. when you share what you're sharing today. And what you've shared elsewhere before as well, when you're trying to explain the friction is the critical ingredient. Right. And I think people think, oh, if it's effort, well, then I'm getting better. That's part of it. Necessary, but not sufficient, as right. we say in science. But the suck part, mm -hmm. the haunt, being haunted, mm -hmm. the stick, mm -hmm. they're really unpleasant. So what he's saying is I need to do more Bulgarian squats. That's what I'm hearing. Pleasant terms. Very. These are probably the most unpleasant terms we've ever used on this podcast. Very. Those are the, those are the levers. Those mm -hmm. are the gears. And without those, this thing that you're talking about, David Goggins. Mm -hmm as a verb, right. you know, I, I sometimes make the joke, but it's not a joke. Mm. Right. Goggins is a name mm. and it's a verb. People right. go, I'm gonna Goggins that, right. right? But that's, I think, again, I'm not a psychologist, but I think that's what you're talking about. The stick, mm. the friction, being haunted. It's the suck part that grows. Why does everyone think everyone is a psychologist? Don't you think that's interesting? Cause I know I, people think I'm a therapist, which is so weird. Or people think Huberman's a therapist, which is like so weird. And I think it's because we don't understand what therapy is. I'm convinced nobody knows what therapy is. Because, like, obviously, when I watch Huberman, they're talking about psychology because they're talking about feelings. But you notice they're not talking about psychology. Have you noticed that David Goggins have, hasn't in one way talked about his trauma? Have you noticed that they're not talking about his childhood in a way that's like, do you think that affects your mental health? You notice no one's had the mental health conversation yet. And I'm still waiting for them to have it. Like, did you know, like, you know, and even if they do have it, lots of people can talk about their mental health without being therapists. But I like that he has to constantly say he's not a therapist. I don't know why people don't know what therapy is. I feel like a therapist is a very specific kind of thing. Even when you're talking about mental health, like therapy is so specific. What was this anterior mid cingulate cortex? So now you know why there's so many people that fail in this world to figure out their purpose, their purpose in life. Where do I go? Because to grow that, while you may not look like me, how my daily life looks, it don't look fun. It don't look fun. So it's a choice that people have to make in life. But what's so funny about it is even the richest of rich who have everything, they always ask me this question. I feel like I'm missing something. I don't feel like I'm missing shit. I don't have what you all have, but you'll never in my life hear me tell you I'm missing something. Everybody is. They're missing this feeling. I found it a long time ago. I found it right there in that willpower thing. Hmm. When you're nothing, nothing, and change yourself into something like me, you call it happiness, peace, whatever the fuck you want to call it. People are missing exactly what went on with David Goggins. Why don't you smile? I do. I do. But I figured something out. That's why I am never, you'll never hear me say I'm missing something. I found it years ago. You find it in the suck. You find it in the suck and you find it repeatedly in the suck to the point where you know exactly who you are. Most people are missing something because they don't know who they are. They never examine themselves. They, they've never done this experiment on themselves. The lab rat, we're all lab rats, but you're also the scientist. You create your own self. Most people are missing something because there's so much trapped in there. 
I don't even want to say potential. I think that's where you use out too much too. There's so much in you that God or whatever the hell you believe in, or if you're an atheist, in you that you have not un unlocked that you walk around with this gorgeous wife. Or okay, 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 okay. I'm going to stop him. Yes, but he's not acknowledging the outside factors. So it's limited. But okay, it is true in the suffering. So if we were referencing philosophy, we would say you find it in the suffering, but you can't purposely choose to suffer. You find it in the suffering. But then since he's only having a relationship with himself, he's also like kind of like it's not quite hitting me the way I want it to hit me. But I would translate this into you find the relationship with your consciousness through the suffering that is life by challenging yourself and looking inward. And of course, most people aren't going to want to do that, right? They're not going to want to be introspective in that way. So he's obviously explaining introspection in that way. But I don't. And I would say when you find that thing. So I would say he's a two who maybe has found his version of joy or his version of purpose. Like, has, do you think David Goggins has solved his meaning crisis? Like Verveke's meaning crisis. Is that, is that what we're in it? Is that the thing? Because again, I think for me, my joy does look like a lot of peace and happiness and giggling and, and just breathing. So when I say like, I found my thing, I found my purpose. Well, my purpose is curiosity. So I'm really lucky that mine is like giggly and fun. And I'm like, ooh. And I'm so excited by it. But that also makes people like also in a weird way discount me because they're like, you're too happy. And I was like, well, that's a weird is how you insulting me by saying I'm too happy. But then David Goggins is like, he doesn't smile enough. He just said people say, why don't you smile more? Oh, that's interesting. I wouldn't want my joy and my happiness or my purpose to be rooted in a version of me that doesn't smile. But I'm a very giggly, happy person most of my life. Like I laugh a lot. That's why I think I love spending time in my own house, like my husband and I are always just ugly laughing. We're always just like literally laughing. And that's how it was growing up when things are good. Like laughing is so important. I want to know if David Goggins laughs, but then I don't want to project my joy onto him. I don't want to say like, if you're not laughing, I don't trust you. But like a part of me wonders, like, does he laugh? Does he have joyous moments? Or if he does laugh and lets it go, will it stop him from being successful? Is the thing he found the thing that keeps him successful or is the thing that brings him laughter and joy? Or am I projecting my values onto him by saying it should involve laughter and joy? Do you know what I'm saying? A great husband, all this money, like, God, I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, because it's about 75% of you is still. And it's true. If you're missing something, you're not having a relationship with your consciousness, right? Fucking in there. Still chained up because you just didn't want to find your willpower. Didn't want to find your soul, your will, your heart, your determination, your guts, your courage. And what that looks like, it looks scary. Like your little scary lab I went in. Scary. To wake up every day and say, I'm stupid, but I want to figure out a way to be smarter. Versus saying, man, I just can't do that. So you limit this box. So your box becomes so small of things you can do. My box wasn't even a box. It was a fucking little, like, little pinhole. And then through examining myself, getting some willpower, some courage, it became bigger than this table. But that's what we all do. That's why I wanted to come here today and talk to you about real shit. Not no fucking like hacks. There's no hacks, bro. It's you against you. You against you. And if you I do agree with this. It is you against you. Yeah. Just understand that. Didn't he just say that he smiles? Yeah, but the fact that he has a reputation for being asked if he ever smiles and he said sometimes, like that's not what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, real Which is fine. He doesn't have to smile. Problem. Real problem. I can understand you misunderstand me running on the street, shirt off, fuck this, no, yeah. I can, I can get it. I get it. If you misunderstand what I'm saying right now today, the problem is you. And you don't want to fix it. I think everything that he's saying is true. I'm not convinced he's joyful. And I'm not convinced even as a two he's found his joy. I feel like he found a purpose that would lose itself again if he faced his trauma. I do. I think if he ended up facing his trauma and unlocking it, it would, it would ruin him. That's my theory. Unless he's been to therapy and he hasn't said it yet. If he has never faced his childhood trauma, if he has never unlocked, if he's never cried over being that fat kid who saw his mom get beat, then I bet if he ever faced that part of himself, it would destroy everything he's built. That's my theory right now. I could be wrong because I think you can find your purpose without challenging your trauma for your whole life. But obviously, ideally, to be well-rounded, I would love to see him face that part of himself because that would be an actual challenge. Because that's the question. If he refuses to face his childhood trauma, has he really faced himself? Maybe he has, and maybe I'm wrong. But given his childhood and given the way he's talking about it, this is obviously absolutely a recipe for trauma and a recipe for coping, overcoming your dysfunction and trauma 
by being a hard ass and working as hard as you can to be disciplined and using anger to fuel it. You know what I mean? So I'm just saying, interesting, you know? JJ says, I feel like he's talking about the process of finding the consciousness sucks and painful and then finds the value from there and what that expression looks like, such as being joyful, which is different. Yeah, let's see if he's done that other thing. You know what I mean? Rock says it feels like he's still in his saving the old version of me phase. Yeah, it kind of feels like he's still that little fat kid. Marcy says, why do you need a purpose? Um, I think to answer that question, Verveki does a really good job about the meaning crisis. You know what I mean? Um, a purpose coincides with meaning. A purpose is a relationship with your consciousness. A purpose isn't about building a business or um, doing something outside of yourself. It's about knowing yourself well enough to know what the sense of your meaning is when you get up every day. And I do think humans, when they're introspective, have an understanding or relationship with that purpose. And I do think humans who aren't introspective and are wondering what that thing is missing within them is that relationship with themselves, their sense of meaning, and their sense of purpose. Right? I do think so. The children of wealthy people are a case study in how not having enough friction can destroy a life. True statement. I mean, I could list off prominent names in the press, but those are actually the least interesting. What's probably more interesting as an example is all the ones we don't hear about because we never hear about them. Right. They just dwindle and wither. Or I think there's this big category of people I'm realizing as we have this conversation today that they're not super successful. They're not struggling. Mm -hmm. They're like successful enough that mm -hmm. they never have to, you can get to the point where you don't have to impose friction. You even said it. Right. Your bank account is in a place yeah. where you don't really need to do all the things you do. Probably mm -hmm. not even a small fraction of them. Do nothing. Right. But you realize the stick and being haunted is the uh, the fuel in the engine. Right. And you'd be a, you'd be truly crazy to give that up because you've, you've internalized all that. Right. But most people, they're, they're good enough yep. for them. Yep. And so they don't actually want to be better badly enough mm -hmm. in order to start going rung after rung. You well, know? think about when you build willpower and think about how much I've built. Now that you know about this, this, I didn't know about this, but think about how much I've built. Everything I've ever done in my life, I didn't want to do. Everything, every day. I'm a lazy piece of shit. And I'm one of the hardest working people to ever step foot on this planet Earth. And I'm saying that very proudly because I know what I do. It's not cocky. I'll tell you I'm stupid. And I'll also tell you the exact opposite of what I've done. It's the truth. It is the truth. So imagine I actually think this is true. I definitely identify with a part of this for my life. Uh, I'm not where he's at, though. And I don't think I could be without it ruining my mental health. But I will say that's really relatable. Like, yeah, I feel like inherently I'm like, incredibly lazy. I just want to sit around and watch anime all day and eat hot Cheetos. Um, but I don't. But I want to. That's what I want to do. I like to work and I want to work. But I, if I worked at my own pace, I would work a lot slower. Like, I'm not working at the pace I prefer. I'm not doing it the way I would prefer it. I'm doing it at a much more disciplined pace. So I would say that's probably true. And I would say that's the difference between people who make it and people who don't. Like people who become successful as YouTubers, it's very specific. And I don't mean successful like big millions of dollars. I just mean it being your full-time job um, in a way that you're satisfied with. It takes a lot of discipline. It just does. It's like a discipline-based job, especially if you're doing everything yourself. Um, you, you know, it's yeah, but that's why I think I'm probably good at it and why it probably satisfies me because it is a challenge to me. You know what I mean? So I think something, I, def I definitely think this is relatable, yeah. This is how much I've developed in that time frame. But this is the scary thing. Why most people don't want to do that, build that willpower, is because it is scary. It unlocks a whole bunch of things about who you are and who you're not. And a lot of people don't want to go down that journey to discover who they are and who they're not. Because it's, it's not a pretty journey. I mean, I've gone down it. It's not like I went down it once. I go down it all the time. And when you unlock that, and you, you can't just turn it off. Like people say, hey, well, how, how come you haven't retired yet? I built all this willpower. Do you think it's gonna let me just retire because my, my, my knees hurt? It's telling me every morning, I wake up like, man, I don't, my knees hurt, my, my legs hurt, my body hurts, but you can still run. So why aren't you running? If you can still run, there'll be a time when you can't lace them up anymore, but you can still run. So I still run. When the time comes I can't run, the body will say, you just can't run. But if I can still do something, that willpower that I have created, it makes me do it every fucking day. Hmm. And that's what they don't get. What build yeah, I don't want to live like this. I'll be really honest with you. I don't live like this. I can't and not have it sacrifice a lot of my joy or mental health. This wouldn't be stimulating for me. I think he's right that you do have to do parts of this for parts of your life at certain moments. But if this was my life, I would want to die. 
Um, and I think that's really hard for maybe him. Like, I don't know if he would believe that. But if I literally did it, it's like, where does your joy come in? Where does your joy play into this? You know what I mean? And that's something that I think is very different. When I say like I'm looking like I'm I want to get people to their joy. I'm not saying it has to look like this and ways. I feel like he's saying it does, but I'm not sure how I feel about that. Like, again, this is sending very specific messages to my brain. I don't know about you guys, but I want to live a life where I do the things I have to do. You know what I mean? Um, Because it makes sense and my discipline will motivate me to do it. But I don't want to have to live a life. Like, I don't feel bad about myself. Maybe it's that. Okay, stop. I do not use negative words towards myself. I am a happy, joyful, giggly person who can be mean sometimes. But I'm a loving, warm, soft person with a hard exterior who loves her life. I love waking up every day. My body's in pain from my fibro. I'm tired because of my brain. I'm exhausted and work is hard, but I love my life. I can be lazy when I want to be, but I'm not a piece of shit. I'm a wonderful human being. And I try really hard to do good by me and the people around me. And even though it's hard, and even though sometimes I just want to be a person like who does nothing, I sometimes don't give into that and I do the work anyways. Like I just, I feel like he's using so many negative words about himself. I don't relate to this. I'm out of that phase of thinking I was a piece of shit. I've already done the therapy. I don't blame myself for anything. You know, I only like, I just, you know, hold yourself accountable, but like move the fuck on. It just feels like his way, maybe it's a values difference for sure. His way of speaking about himself is not motivational to me because like I'm not in a shit place anymore. If I was in a shit place, I think this would be much more motivational, but I'm not anymore. So I think maybe that's the difference. And maybe that's why my work doesn't relate to a lot of people because they feel like I remember I got messages from people who were like, hey, I when I heard your work the first time, I was really fucking mad at you. I was in a really bad place. I really was getting down on myself. And now uh, a year later, I was thinking about what you were saying and I was like, oh, my God, wait, I get it now. So maybe if you see my work when you're feeling really shitty about yourself, it's going to make you feel worse. But because I'm in a really good place in my life, when I hear him talk, I'm like, man, you're kind of negative, bro. You're kind of a pessimist, bro. And maybe because I'm an optimist, it's like, you know what I mean? I'm just too, like, optimist. I'm very much like a mom. I'm like, you can do it, but also you don't have to. It's up to you. (laughs) And he's just like, you're a piece of shit. (laughs) And I'm like, okay. Yeah, maybe it's just because, like, I don't need to bully myself anymore. I used to bully myself to get myself to do stuff, but I don't have to bully myself anymore. I just negotiate with myself now, and then I radically accept when I can't. Like, if he's having a neurodivergent, like, meltdown, does he just ignore it? Because I feel like I don't want to do that. You know? Isn't his work for people in a shit place? I don't know. Is it? He keeps saying all humans. He keeps saying everyone. He keeps using generalization words. Where he keeps saying, this is for everyone. Well, who's everyone? Because, like, not everyone's having a shit day. You know what I mean? But also, if people are complacent in their life, I don't think that's morally wrong. So Andrew just said to him, oh, people with, like, good enough bank accounts and good enough lives, they don't strive for more. But I don't think you're obligated to strive for more. Why? Like, why do you have to strive for more? You know what I mean? I think that's the difference between my work and other people's is I think you should strive if you want to as an individual, but not because, like, there's a moral obligation to it. You know what I mean? Cosmic says, I think you come off strong to others. Yeah, I mean, I I think I am a strong person. I just don't think I'm like uh, this. Like, I think I'm just more optimistic, I think, maybe. I don't know. I think, yeah. Oh, that's what it is. Colleen says, I find him interesting, but I don't want to live like that. I want to, I enjoy having a chill life. Yeah, I'm, I'm too much of a pothead for this, I think. I'm a very chill person. I like having a chill life. You know what I mean? I just want a chill life. She says, when I first saw the levels video, I thought it was dumb as fuck. But then I challenged my cynicism and wow, best choice ever. Yay. Rock says, yeah, when he speaks, I keep hearing it. Quote, if you're someone like I was and believe X, Y, and Z by yourself, you can do this and and poof. Yeah. Yeah. Zen says, I feel like you can't truly want to make a change and be happy with who you are or else why wouldn't you just say the same? Yeah, but I don't think that's what it is. I don't think people, I think people can be unhappy with who they are and not make the change. I just think it's nuanced. I just think it's so nuanced. You know what I mean? So like, it's not about just being unhappy. Plenty of people are unhappy and never make the change. Plenty of people are happy and make changes. I just don't think it's black and white. 
I make changes every day that I feel like I do to like add more joy into my life. It's not always negatively motivated, but sometimes it is like my fibro was giving me pain. So I'm working out, but like I'm always, I'm not always negatively like motivated, you know, but, but you might need that. Right. Yeah. So that, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm not mad at him. I'm not mad at it. Right. You know what I mean? Sound says, are you assuming he has a breakdown? That's a bit of a projection, isn't it? Not everyone is behaving or experiencing the same. Well, no, I'm saying, well, first he's ADHD and he said his life is shit and he said he does struggle every day and he says it's very ugly and very hard. So I'm assuming he has some variation of not a pretty life, which is in neurodivergent terms related to possibly breakdowns or in related to some sort of something. And my question is, what is that thing that he's describing to us? He's not being clear, right? He keeps saying, I don't want a camera in my home because I don't want them to see how ugly it is. Okay. Or that because other people don't want to see it. Okay. So what's the ugly? I would think it was breakdowns, but what's the ugly to him? Whatever it is, I'm just giving a word. I'm not projecting. I'm just giving a word. Whatever the thing is he's describing as ugly, whatever that is, does he give into it? Does he give himself a gold star anyways? Does he hurt himself? Does he, is he self-harming by abusing his knees and doing it anyways? You know you can be a successful self-harmer. So is he self-harming by pushing himself? That's the next question. Is like, how does Goggins know when he's self-harming and when he's not? Because you can self-harm into success. So that's the question too, right? Like, what's his balance? How does he know when he's being balanced? How does he know when to give himself a break? When does he know to breathe? When does he know that he's allowed to take a day off? Like, I want to know those things now. So maybe, again, I'm asking questions. Maybe it hasn't come up yet. You know what I mean? Rock says, maybe again, it's just my brain. But when he says everyone, it still feels like he's using a specific word for the type of person who doesn't believe they are capable of doing it. Obviously, everyone's doing that. When I, everyone, see how I just did it. That's what we're mostly doing with language. I'm just trying to see if that's true because remember, lots of people think everyone and I'm trying to figure out if he's that kind of a person. Lots of people I talk to swear everyone when they say everyone except people that are like in comas. Okay, do you mean that? Do you mean literally everyone? Because obviously like it's even like it's not even everyone minus everyone in comas. So I'm just trying to figure out, is he the person who literally means everyone or is he a person who's just saying everyone but doesn't mean everyone? Like he's only talking about his bubble, right? I can't, I don't know yet. I don't, I'm not sure. You know what I mean? Fishy says, I don't know if I'm wrong, but Goggins, he feels too angry at the world and other people for not, who are not being like him. Yeah, exactly. Like he has high expectations of him and people. It's about other people and not the self. Yeah, he feels a little too, um angry for me to feel like uh motivated but I think anger can be a motivator it definitely was in my 20s I think anger was definitely motivated motivating in my 20s you know what I mean Sen says I found Goggins in 2020 when I started when I first started really running but I don't follow him at all anymore because I believe he's unhealthy mentally you don't run with broken limbs to improve yourself yeah it feels like he doesn't have a lot of balance between self-harm and self-improvement but I could be so wrong right I don't know this Fishy says, meanwhile, your work, Brit, is very much about the self. In capital letters, there is no room to blame the world and put responsibility in other people. You can have that phase and be that person, but it's not really the point. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. We'll keep going because maybe we're maybe we're just, you know, we're just going along with it. I'm just trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? JJ says, maybe sitting on the couch is ugly to him. Yeah, maybe for sure. It could be. But I wonder if self-care is also ugly to him. That's my concern. Right now, I want to know if self-care is ugly to him. How does he self-care? How does he like give himself a break? How does he not burn out? I want to know all the all the ways he gives himself a uh, leniency. It sounds like he doesn't though. So I'm curious about that. Kay says, do you think when he's describing things, uh, these things, he's describing it how he sees it or how the bubble tends to see these things like exercise and discipline? You know, I'm not really sure. I don't know at this point, you know? Yeah, I'm not really sure. Panda says, can you clarify what you mean by moralizing something? I mean, I'm not casting a judgment. Like, I'm not saying, like, he's an evil person. I'm not condemning him. I'm not saying he, it's even against my morals. I'm not putting my morals on him. I'm not moralizing it. Like, I'm not saying, 
oh my God, I'm making a judgment about him and he's an evil person, a rah, rah, rah. But it feels like there, you know, when I'm, when I say, oh, he's moralizing it or I'm not moralizing it. I'm saying we're, I'm not, there's a judgment that comes with moralization. Like I'm going to, I'm moralizing this right now. I'm saying I'm casting judgment. That's, that's what I usually mean by that. Ghoul says, I don't know. It seems like he's coping or masking something with the grind. Yeah. I feel like there's a little bit of dishonesty somewhere and he keeps saying he's telling me the truth, but something feels like a lie now. I'm not sure what it is. In the beginning, he makes some fire points. But then he says something and I'm like, that sounds like a lie though. But I don't think a malicious lie. I think a trauma lie. I still want to hear that he went to therapy for the abuse. Because if he didn't, then I'm like, mm. 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 A human being is you start with the small building blocks. And before you know it, man, you become something that you, it doesn't even make sense to most people because it's just who you are now. That's why I can still run at 50 with broke, with, at 49 with broke down knees and broke down body. Because my body knows you still can. Therefore, I did you hear that? I can still run it before you know it, man. You become something that you, it doesn't even make sense to most people because it's just who you are now. That's why I can still run at 50 with broke, with, at 49 with broke down knees and broke down body because my body knows you still can. Therefore, I do. Second, you stop, the, the willpower is gone. Do you know what that sounds like to me? Um, you know, if you just start starving yourself every day, at first, it's really bad. And then eventually, you get so used to it, you don't even notice. But if you start to eat food again, your body's going to reject it. And then you're going to realize, oh, my God, I've been starving myself. Do you get what I mean? It sounds like he's working on momentum and he's really afraid to stop. And that's the red flag. Do you know what I mean? When does he have a moment of peace? When does he let himself go from the attachment he has to his momentum? That's why I say if he actually went to therapy and had to face himself, he might ruin everything he's built for himself. Monet says self-harm dressed as self-care. Bro, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Bro's a masochist. He just got to admit it. Honestly, maybe he is a masochist. Yeah. Sounds like he's scared to lose his identity. Honestly, I think he should be terrified because he says he found that thing that people are looking for. But I don't think people are looking for a thing. I don't know. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe we're wrong. Let's keep, let's give him a chance. And that's beautiful. I'm so glad you brought that to me because I always wonder, what's the separation thing now? At 24 years old, I started building something that I didn't even know was going to be what it is now at 49. And that's all it was, was this bat. This structure, anterior mid cingulate cortex, has inputs and outputs from a bunch of places. But you'll probably not be surprised to learn that it's strongly activated when we move our body, mm -hmm. when we don't want to move our body. I feel like it, it's Jesus. like the David Goggins is, structure, right? It, really you know, is. it is. And it also has strong connections to the dopamine reward pathway. Mm -hmm. And everyone goes, yay, dopamine reward. Everyone loves dopamine. Mm -hmm. I'm partially responsible for people knowing a bit more about dopamine. Mm -hmm. But dopamine is badly understood. Everyone thinks dopamine, dopamine hits. It's about reward. It's about motivation and drive. Mm. And there are pain inputs to the dopamine centers of the brain. No one talks about that. Everyone's like, oh, you want the chocolate, you know, chocolate, sex, cocaine. All the yeah, that's all true. Right. You release dopamine. Pain releases dopamine. The anterior mid cingulate cortex can trigger the release of dopamine in response to this thing that we're calling friction. And that's a learned thing. That's something that no animal or human being comes into the world learning. We all are averse to pain mm -hmm. and like pleasure, like sugar fat, don't like hot surfaces. Right. But well. this is a structure that learns. Mm -hmm. It has neuroplasticity, the ability to change throughout the entire lifespan. And here's the part that I think, again, this is just neuro nerd speak for what you already know and have done and exemplify is that it, people say, oh, it has plasticity, you can change it. But guess what, it has plasticity in both directions. It can grow, but just as easily as it can grow, it's like silly putty, it can shrink. Right. So it requires constant upkeep right and that answer isn't one that people are going to like nope. they're like give me the energy drink give me the supplement give me the yes. give me the sauna protocol that's yes. going to make my anterior mid cingulate yes. cortex there's someone out there right now is going wait if i took transcranial magnetic stimulation and i stimulate yeah you probably actually they've done that they stuck a little wire during neurosurgery into this structure this is actually discovered by a, a colleague of mine joe parvizi stimulate and the patients go i feel like there's a storm coming and they go oh is it scary and they go no i want to go through it they come mm -hmm. off the stimulation and people are like this is the seat of what we're talking about right exactly and it learns so the fact that you kept this brain structure, I'm convinced if we image your brain, it'd be large and it would be larger in two years, in a year. But this is the no days off rationale. Because ah. it can grow and it can shrink. I know. What you're saying right now, I didn't know any of this. And I never, and I always talk to people, I, I wish I could just put this on paper. And, and you're saying it in a way that people can understand. I can never put into words on what I built and the power that is within all of us. But you put it so, like, in, in a scientific way. Most people, like for me, he's just crazy. That's why I don't like talking about it, man. I know I'm not crazy. I know what I have. Okay, to be fair, we did judge him. Let's see if we're wrong. I had to do to get where I had to go. 
People look at it as crazy because they're people that just, if you can't imagine yourself doing something, if you can't imagine yourself doing something, the person that's doing it is crazy. Sure. Because in your mind, the logic behind it, it doesn't compute. Therefore, you have to give somebody a title. And the title for me is usually, he's crazy, he's this, he's that. No, no. For some reason, me wanting to be somebody so fucking bad in my life, I created that. And I've been trying to figure out years of my life trying to explain to people. But even though you're explaining it now, this is the easy fucking part. Them listening to this shit is the easy fucking part. The part that why there always be the ones of ones is because putting that practice, putting that into actual work, no, man. No, that's where the demons come in. That's where you're like, I, I, I don't want to be better. I don't want to be better. This is what it takes to be better. I don't want to be better. So everybody's, that's why there's a lot of average. And it makes me so fucking mad. That's what it is. Why? Why does it make you so fucking mad that people want to be average? I've heard this criticism in my work where people are like, well, what's the point of your levels if you don't want to get everyone to five? And I'm like, what? 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 No, my whole idea. Well, mine's on introspection and philosophy, to be fair. But my goal isn't to get you to five. My goal is to share a tool with you and have you use it in your life if you want it, bro. Okay. And to talk to people about these conversations. But I'm not mad at anybody for being who they are. I might be mad when I'm in my feelings, but I'm not actually mad, bro. Like, human's gonna human, you do you. So I can get feel, I can get mad. I can absolutely invoke my anger. But I'm not harboring anger at the world anymore. I'm not 15. You know, I'm not 22. I'm not 28 anymore. I'm past this stage of harboring actual anger at the world. Now, do I get sad? Do I get devastated for the pain of the world? Absolutely, bro. I'm a mom at heart. Seeing little kids being bombed around the world fucking breaks me. Seeing little, like, seeing sex trafficking statistics fucking breaks me. Like, of course it does. But at the same time, I know, like, this is exactly what life is. So I'm not mad at anyone for being average, bro. Live your life. If average is going to lend you to your peace, cool. If average is going to make you happy, cool. If average is going to make you not hurt other people, even better. But this is the red flag I see in David Goggins. I'm like, oh, now that's a projection of my own values. So for me, I need to radically accept, let go of my attachment of David Goggins being anyone but what he is, a person on a journey who did an extraordinary thing. So instead of saying, um, I'm not condemning him. I'm not judging him. Instead of saying like David Goggins is a bad person, just like, oh, okay. So David Goggins journey is how do you take a traumatized kid who ha pushed through willpower to overcome and hit it himself um, and find himself in a successful um, ex circumstance because of that trauma he never healed. And now his momentum is keeping him going and he's angry at the world for not being as good as him, but also understands he's exceptional, but also feels like he's a piece of shit. So everyone should be as like, I need to accept that this is what happens when dysfunction and trauma reaches, um, helps you reach success. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool phenomenon, but that's my assessment so far is that he was the perfect kind of dysfunctional and the perfect kind of um, introspective to get him to success, but it didn't give him a sense of joy or peace or love or understanding of the world around him, which is fine. So he's angry because he's lacking that joy, but highly motivational for people who are starting off at the basics, you know? Every day I walk this earth and I see average all over the fucking place. And they want to ask me, how did you do it? I can't tell you how, because you're not going to fucking, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. You can, you're going to continue being because every day you wake up, like he says, like get the coffee, make the make the pancakes, kiss the girl, kiss the kids. You wake up, right to work. Immediately your mind is in action. No one wants to do that. No one. And I don't blame him. Do you hear him? He just said he just judged people who wake up, enjoy their coffee, eat their pancakes, and hang out with their kids because nobody wants to get up and go right to work. Yeah, dude. I don't think life is work. Work is not life. Joy is not found in this unless you're this kind of person, but he's not. He's angry. He's angry. So he hasn't even found it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I appreciate, I appreciate his journey. I think it's amazing. But guys, it's okay to have pancakes. Please enjoy your children. Please don't have them unless you're going to spend time with them. Please enjoy your spouses and your life. You know, it's okay to do that. It's okay to take a day off. After this, I think I'm going to make me pancakes. I think I'm going to make some bread and some pancakes. I am. I think I am. Because like, you know, you're going to die. One day you're going to die. He's got what, 20 years, 30 more years. 
I hope he spent some of that living. You know what I mean? Living. Shadow B says, I can understand being irritated at people who complain and do nothing about it. No, no, I'm irritated by that too. I just don't care. You know, to a certain extent, ultimately, you can't really know what their effort output it truly is. So I avoid judging. I just think he cares too much about people that he shouldn't care about, you know? Kay says there's a lack of why exploration. I feel like he did surface level radical acceptance and started accepting the systems of his life as totality, then started introspecting from that point. Surface level isn't a judgment of his introspection, just acknowledgement that there are several layers beyond and deeper ones to dive into. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah, interesting. Hmm, his book was really good. I bet it was. He seems really interesting. His life is fascinating already. Jessica says, I may not agree with the same values as others, but that doesn't stop me from radically accepting them. It won't disrupt, disrupt my peace. If someone wants my help or won't do the work, the result is up to them. Exactly. Absolutely. The result is up to you. You know what I mean? Or them. And then you, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's a little too attached for me. Ghoul says, do you think he's mad because he's jealous? Ooh, like he's afraid he might lose something. I think he's probably holding on to the anger because it's a great motivational tool for him. I think he, his anger allows him, allows, keeps him going. And I think that's fine. Honestly, it's kind of impressive he's done it for so long. It's kind of impressive. But that's why people also don't want to go to therapy or face themselves because it could ruin their motivation. Sometimes when you heal and actually get better, you become less motivated. I really think he'd probably look down on communities that like meditate or spend a lot of their, like he says he believes in God. Which God is asking you to work yourself out of spending time with your kids? Did I hear that wrong? Let's listen again. Maybe I heard him wrong. But which God is asking you to work yourself away from your children? Average. And it makes me so fucking mad. Every day I walk this earth and I see average all over the fucking place. And they want to ask me, how did you do it? I can't tell you how because you're not going to fucking, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. You're going to continue, continue being out because every day you wake up, like he says, like, get the coffee, make the, make the pancakes kiss the girl, kiss the kids, you wake up, right to work. Immediately your mind is in action. No one wants to do that. No. Yeah, nobody wants to do that because it's not reasonable. What religion tells you to work 24-7 and neglect your family? You know, what philosophy tells you to work 24-7 and neglect your family? Yeah, nobody wants to do that. And I think the people that do end up being shitty parents and shitty spouses. But he's married. So maybe his spouse has like low, like l a low need for him. You know, Alice says, what's the point of all this hard work if you never get to enjoy yourself or the people around you? Yep. Like, that's the problem, right? I believe he has an abandoned daughter, but I'm not sure if that's confirmed. Oh, really? <laughs> you have a relationship with your kids? Lame. <laughs> Stop, guys. <laughs> no, I don't blame them. But don't be mad. When you're laying there in your fucking bed and you're in the fucking hospital and you're 70, 80, 90 years old and you're thinking, Man, I feel like I didn't fucking do something. Because you did. You didn't do it. You didn't do shit. You may live a great life, man, but you're always going to feel empty inside. I don't feel empty. It says, according, it says, Google says, though he is low uh, key private life, he fathered a daughter with a former girlfriend named Pam, according to his book, Can't Hurt Me. So he does have a child. I wonder if he has a relationship with that child. Interesting. So call me what you want. There's not one empty bone in my fucking body because I have figured out that really the magic potion, at least in my life, and it's very rewarding. People like to talk about what they used to be able to do. I hear this a lot. You know, you should have seen me in high school. I always laugh. Yep. Like, yeah, okay, got it. Um, and it's not just guys. You should have seen me working out in high school. I was yeah. super fit. Um, people will look back to a time where they felt like they were capable of something and now they're not. Mm -hmm. And you kind of want to just grab them. You know, Wait, that was you then. It's you now. And But people tend to think about how the conditions that were around success must have been part of it. And you can understand why. It's like, it's very rational. I was in that situation. I was successful. I'm in this situation. I'm not. That was the past. This is the present. Ergo, capable, right? right? You see how people get into these loops. And as you mentioned, you spend the first 20 years of your life in a extremely challenged circumstances. Yeah. And then you can see how people get to a point where like everything feels hard. Like when you're 300 pounds, I haven't never been 300 pounds, but I can't imagine it feels good to get up and move around. It's defeating. I got a friend, he's in excess of 300 pounds. We've been trying on him for years, but no, no win. And he's got crazy psoriasis on the back of his calves. And he, he actually smells bad sometimes because he, he um, can't wash as well as he would. He's big, big. Right. That's hard. And uh, it pulls on my sympathy. Right. You know, but life is very hard for him and getting worse. He's a young guy with a lot of medical issues now mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. And so I think people like that think, well, it's already hard. That's mental health, bro. Did you guys get him a therapist? You know what I hate about certain bubbles? Has anybody gotten this man a therapist? 
and then like a real philosophy teacher and then a whole bunch of other things. Do you know what I mean? Like, because again, maybe he's a one and he's not going to do it anyways. But nobody gets that fat without fucking mental health problems. Nobody gets very skinny without mental health problems. Nobody runs themselves ragged without mental health problems. So again, I don't know why all these people like, but the thing is they'd have to be able, they'd have to be open. Like people have to want to change. You know what I mean? Kay says he's like a brute force introspection by going completely left brain and ignoring right brain versus introspecting through the full system integration. Yeah, I agree. He has some really good points, but then he loses me because like his life. So the way he describes his life. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. It sounds like masochism. No, it sounds like hedonism, but masochistic. He has a masochistic hedonism life. He's really only doing what he wants. He keeps saying he's not doing anything he wants. But it doesn't sound that way to me, you know, but not really because like I think you always end up doing what you um, need to or want to, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Why would I make it harder? Your message is a little different and you have the life experience. So I'm not different. You've been there. So for me saying, oh, yeah, lose weight. You know, I was a skinny guy who got to be a less skinny guy. Mm. So I don't really have a foot to stand on. What do you say to those people who are like, listen, I'm getting up in the morning is hard. Trying to not dissolve into a puddle of my own tears and my own misery is hard. You know why people connect with my book so well? For some reason, God put me in almost every- Oh, Ghoul says, I think he's angry at people because he can only feel satisfied when he's grinding while other people are happy chilling with friends and family. He's unhealed. Maybe. Maybe. M maybe. Like, again, like, he says he believes in God, but which God is telling him uh, to feel bad for making pancakes with your kids or whatever? You know what I mean? Every fucked up situation on the planet Earth. Maybe he misspoke. Maybe he misspoke. So when I talk to people, it's not sugarcoated because I'm not saying it from I'm, I was 175 pounds my whole life. I don't say much to those people. I, maybe you're a piece of shit. Maybe you're, you want to be nobody. Maybe you're happy exactly where you are in life because obviously you are. Maybe you don't have the determination to be somebody better than who you are. And if you want to live with that, I'll support you in that. Okay. If you're good with being who you are. And every day you wake up and every day you smell like shit because you can't wash your body well. And your skin's messed up because your health's so bad. And you can't put your clothes on, right? You need help with that. You need help, like, when I was doing, I need help wiping my ass. That makes you feel good? There's nothing I can say to you. If every day you wake up with this, see, people are haunted. But they obviously like horror films because they keep watching the same fucking movie. I don't like horror films. A lot of people like horror films. So I don't say much to them. I... He feels like he's running. He, that's maybe why he runs. He, oh, he feels like he's always running. And I want to see Goggins when he's not running. It feels like he's running away from that horror film. Like he's running away from the ghosts instead of getting rid of them so he can like sprint down the road or walk down the road. Yeah, maybe it's that. That's the part I don't like. He's right. People are haunted by themselves. They love horror films. They watch their own life go by. They don't care. They're in bad positions. But he himself feels like he's running from his ghost. I said exactly what I said to you right there because I was once you. I didn't like horror films, so I changed it. Some people are just... But what's the film now? Is it Forrest Gump? Because, like, what's the film now? You know what I mean? Because it's not, like, Vacation in the Bahamas. Like, what is it? Oh, he's like Forrest Gump. Shadow B. <laughs> Twins. They become, like you said, it gets real small when you're lazy and you're fat. Your will. Their will is so small that they don't have any. And you can't give it to them. Yeah. There has to be something. This is, this is what... I'm I agree with this. Like, that's why I radically accept, like, people are where they're going to be. Why is he angry at the world then? Oh, <gasps> interesting that he knows. Interesting that he knows you can only help people when they want to help themselves. But he's still angry at the world for being average and making pancakes. Man, guys, I'm making pancakes after this. I'm talking about now because this isn't a hack. This has to be in you. Something in you has to wake up. And usually the only person that can wake it up is you. Sometimes you can read a David Goggins book because I was all this shit and then a lot more of fucked up. But if you don't have a little flame, you know, just that, just barely, you're done. I can't, I can't light it for you. And that's the harsh reality of this life that I want to get across so fucking bad. You can watch me, you can watch you, you can watch fucking Rogan and Cameron Haynes, all these motherfuckers. You can go to Tony Robbins' fucking bullshit, all this shit. You can do all this shit. If you, you could keep going back and keep spending money and spending money and spending money with no results. You can wonder, wow, maybe let me go try out David Goggins. He ain't going to fucking help you. You have to explore, examine the insides of yourself. And what do you really want out of life? Your friend, a lot of people out here just don't fucking want it. So guess what? Have fun with your life. Go from three to 350 to 400 to 450 to 500 because you don't want it. And that's You don't need it. 
You can want a lot of things you never need. I think you need a need more than a want. SB says you're going to make pancakes over your cheese bread. No, I think I'm going to make both. I'm going to be gluttonous. David Goggins makes me want to eat because he's stressing me out. <laughs> I eat when I'm stressed. He's stressing me out. Like I'm going to lift weights and eat bread at the same. He's stressing me out. I cannot. He like literally gives me anxiety. I'm like, sir, smoke a smoke a joint, bro. Dude, harsh reality. I can't give you shit. You can't give him shit. You can give me ideas. But at the end of the day, when I was losing the weight, I had to miserably wake up every morning in the cold because it was Indiana in November when it started. I was miserable. This is your new life. Take it or leave it. There's no happiness about it. There's no peace behind it. Why? It sucks. He doesn't have any philosophy. See, I think suffering is like about philosophy. It's about meditation. He, need re he needs to re read Tao Te Ching. He needs to read some Tao Te Ching. He needs some Buddhism in his life, bro. It just fucking sucks. And that's the one thing, if I could teach anybody anything, it just fucking sucks. And it's going to continue to suck. And then one day you get to a, sp a special part of your life that it might get a little bit better. But to lose, the weight you have to lose, my friend. Sorry. It's going to suck every fucking day. Because then when you're 300 pounds, you're going to go out to lose weight, you'll probably get injured. So then you got to work on the injury and then you get even more depressed. This is what I went through. And then you're hungry because now you're depressed. It's, it's just a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. And if you're not strong mentally and you have no willpower, you're going to continue falling. Yeah. Okay. So I would say it's not about willpower. Willpower is moving into a reserve of energy you don't even have yet. Willpower is for, op for moments when you have to push yourself when you absolutely have no reason or ability to rationalize why you're doing something hard. I would say first, get your mental health together. Okay, where are you mentally? What are the things you're challenging yourself with? What are the things you need help with? Then physical health. Okay, where are you with your body? What's your relationship with your health? Okay, fiscal health. What's your job like? How are you surviving? How do you have food, water, shelter? And then you've got to figure out who you are spiritually. Philosophy. What are you doing? What's the reason you're even getting up? You can beat yourself up your whole life, but that's not good enough. Why does David Goggins get up in the morning? Why does he do what he does? Because he doesn't want to be a traumatized kid anymore? Cool. So you're just living within your trauma. Like, what's his reasoning? I don't get what David Goggins' purpose is. He says he has that thing. He keeps saying, I have that thing that people all want. What is it? What is it? What does he have? He's not telling me. You know, when people find peace and they really know, like, like, oh, my God is the answer. I have peace and love and everything. He's saying there's no happiness. There's no peace. It's just ugly. And I'm saying, why? So what is his thing? And then the fifth thing to be a whole human being, in my opinion, okay, my, this is my list, is who are you in the story? So who is David Goggins in this story? Well, sure, he's the successful businessman, but he also sounds like the traumatized fat kid. Okay, and it sounds like he's running away from his ghosts, but it also sounds like he fights his own demons, but like in a way that makes me feel like they're always with him. He feels like guts and berserk, like he can't get the demons to stop following him. And I'm saying, how do we get rid of the demons, right? And then he said, oh, I'll always be angry. I'm never going to get rid of that. Well, that sounds like a choice. Why are you choosing to be angry for the whole rest of your life? That feels like a choice. Funny how he will look at other people and get angry that they're average because they're making a choice. And I'm looking at him saying like, yeah, but like you could choose any life. Why are you choosing to stay angry? Again, I'm not judging you for it. I know why other people would stay angry. It's comforting. It's motivational. Maybe he needs his anger to keep running. But again, why does he say that he'll never, like his anger will never go away and he'll always have it? Why is he choosing to be angry? I'm curious. I'm back in this hole versus the man that sits back and goes, all right, motherfucker. This is why I cuss. This is what is in me. This, this is what it took for me to be me. Sorry. It didn't take, hey, okay, we're going to do this today. No, this fucking really sucks. This is real, dude. Okay, so that's definitely, some people need to be bullied through it. That's fine. But does that mean he's healed? This is real. And every day, I'm, 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 I'm set back, I'm set back, I'm set back, I'm set back. So this is what I would tell your boy. This is what, exactly what I tell him. Every day you wake up, you're going to probably be set back for the first four weeks before you lose to significant weight because of the mind is going to be fucking with you the whole time. There's no dopamine. There's no dopamine in there at 300 pounds. You got nothing. Your hormones are shot. You have to envision something that is more powerful than you. Something has to get you out of bed. And you have to create it. It has to be false because you're not it. You're a fat piece of shit. And that's the reality. Ooh, he's bullying himself so hard, which is fine. Some people need that motivation. See, I would say you do need something to get you out of bed. It's my values. The reason I do what I do, my values, which are a construct because of the relationship I have with my consciousness. Right? So that's why I do what I do. The reason I do what I do is because I have a relationship with my values, 
which I constructed on my own for my consciousness. And they motivate me to get me up and make me do things. But they also allow me a day off. They also allow me to eat bread at night. They also allow me to take a chill pill. My values also say, girl, spend time with your husband and make some love. Don't work yourself to the bone where you don't even know you're in a relationship anymore. So again, what are your values? What are David's values? What is he doing? I think it's interesting that instead of uh, using his values to get him out of the bed, he uses bullying himself into imagining a version of himself that doesn't exist. That's interesting. So when I work out, yes, I want to be a mama, muscle mommy, but I don't really imagine muscle mommy Brittany. When I'm working out, I try to be completely in the present moment. I used to bully myself to try to get things going, but it wouldn't work for me. So instead, I practice being completely in the moment. So when I'm lifting a weight, I'm like completely in the moment of lifting this weight. And I'm really thinking about what muscle group I'm using. I'm really thinking of like when I'm lifting up my shoulders and I'm working out, I'm thinking about, okay, like I'm in the moment. So I actually kind of like let everything disappear. Sometimes I listen to like podcasts or I listen to like a stream or something, but I'm still like, I will allow myself to, to stop listening to the stream mentally and just focus on like what I'm doing. But I went through my 20s. Yes. Oh my God. Rock says it's giving me Eminem. I bully myself. In my 20s, I did. I referenced Eminem. In my 20s, I bullied myself to make myself do the thing I couldn't do. In my 20s, this absolutely worked. But it was a cope. And I'm saying, how has this man been coping for 20 something years? It was absolutely a cope when I was doing it in my 20s. I'm not saying it's a cope for him, but it sounds like one if he can't enjoy a pancake. Now, again, now I've transformed all of my goals into like living in the moment, especially when it comes to physicality. So just, you know, interesting, interesting David Goggins perspective. Okay. of it. So you have to create a false reality to live in that just to get. Britt says he lives exclusively exclusively off haterade. Yeah, that's kind of the vibes I get from him. To work on yourself. That's the reality. He'll he'll see this and he'll appreciate that message. We'll see what he does. We'll so see. so far, last 13 years, it's been no movement. But I've had other friends who Sorry, um, Discord says, just hopped back in when B started talking about willpower, so I might be missing some context. But for me, tapping into my willpower never fucking works. If anything, I get so motherfucking burnt out. And then everything, um, eventually binge on the thing I was willpowering myself against. Okay. Willpower to me is like, let's say I start off the day with 10 spoons. And by the end of the day, I still have something I really have to get done. It's really important. But I've used up all of my 10 spoons of energy. I will willpower my way into taking negative spoons from my bank account. I'll take out a loan and I'll take five spoons from the bank of energy. And by the next day, I will pay for it. So right now, I've been willpowering my way this week through not getting enough sleep. And a big part of that is because I'm still, I'm re you guys know I'm going to talk about it till I figure it out, but I'm figuring out my sleep schedule. I'm really figuring it out. What is the best way to make this work for me? And I'm trying to figure it out, but a big part of it is like, I think I know what I'm going to do. I So in my head, I'm like, okay, I think I know what I'm going to do, but it's going to take some time to get there. I can't just do it overnight, but I am willpowering my way and I'm going to pay for it later. I'm paying for it with chronic headaches. I'm paying it with body aches. I'm absolutely paying it by yawning at the end of stream. I'm paying for it and I feel it. And it's going to take me weeks to catch up on sleep after I've already fucked up my sleep. Like, literally so willpower is great it pushes you to get something done you have to get down right now but you will always pay for it so that well always an asterisk so when I look at David Goggins I keep asking myself if his whole life is willpower when is he going to pay for it when is he going to pay for it because and it sounds like he's paying for it with relationships it sounds like he's paying for it by not enjoying pancakes it sounds like he's paying for it by not spending time with his kids I'm just using this as an example because he did but I don't know if that's if that's true he just made it sound like an average person chooses their family while an exceptional person chooses work so if that is his mantra then that is the consequence of the willpower right okay you know, Eddie says, what, what do you mean when you say relationship with my consciousness? A relationship with you. Like you can call it a soul, your consciousness, the thing that makes you you. That thing that makes you a you, the relationship with that, your inner self. Who, uh, who were drug and alcohol addicts who quit after one conversation, never went back. That's awesome. I mean, they, they want it. Yeah, just one, one guy, I won't out him, but walked up. 
It's not true, though. It works differently. It's not about they want it. See, this is such a reductive old man philosophy. Men, old men are so reductive in their thinking when they're like, you just want it so you could do it overnight. It's yes and no. Yes and no. It's about it's about. Well, I guess he has a balanced understanding. Like my dad quit smoking overnight when my mom was pregnant with me. Cool. But my dad obviously wasn't addicted in the same way someone with an addiction is. If you have an addiction to cigarettes, you're not quitting it overnight. Sorry, sis. It's not happening. Okay. My dad was obviously not addicted. Instead of thinking, oh, my dad quit cigarettes overnight. Amazing. My dad was probably not addicted. He was just smoking every day in the same way an addict would like a pack a day. Let's say, I don't know how much he was smoking, but he wasn't ever addicted because I don't think it's universally addictive the way other people experience it. Like some people don't have those relationships. I've quit things overnight myself, but it's because it was easy. Do you know what I'm saying? I didn't quit because it was hard. I quit overnight because it was easy. It's not hard. You know what I mean? What is hard? Like, what does that mean? So again, I think it's a little reductive to be like, oh, they wanted it. And that's why they quit overnight. It's like, well, again, I don't think you have to want it. I think you need to need it. I think wanting something is not very motivating. Like, I want a lot of things. I'm not motivated by what I want. I'm motivated by what I need. I'm never, Brittany is not motivated by what she wants. I am only motivated by what I need. What I want is like, cool, that'd be fun if it happened, but it's not necessary. I can live without things I want. I cannot live without things I need. And I think that's the difference in conversation, or at least in wordage that I'd be using. To me at a party in 2019, July 4th party, and said, uh, I'm a pile. And I go, what? And he goes, I'm a pile. Look at me. I'm 60 pounds overweight. And I go, do you drink? He goes, every day. I go, how much? He goes, a case. He goes, I smoke a lot of weed. But he's successful in other areas of his life. And so I said, well, here's what I know. Quit alcohol and weed for you. You know, I'm not telling people what to do. Don't eat until 2 p.m. Get on an exercise bike and pedal in the morning like someone's chasing you with a poison dart till you want to puke. And I was kind of half joking. Right. And then uh, two months later, he was like, I haven't had a drink. I lost 30 pounds. He lost that 60 pounds. He never went back. Now he's, he's super fit. It's amazing. So some people flip the switch. He is very self-critical mm -hmm. by nature. That's what mm. He's super self-critical. Yep. That's what flips the switch. Yeah. Think about it, man. We know what to do. We don't need Angie Huberman to tell us what to do. We know That's true. We don't need anyone. We know what well, we don't know, though, because like you might not actually have the tools, but the world, the information is out there. We all know what to do, guys. We all know how we're fucking up, but we only know when we know. So when I say you know what to do, what I'm really saying is you'll know what to do or you do know what to do or you know something is wrong. But it's a matter of realizing like, OK, the information is out there, but what do we do? We know. We know what to do. But it's a matter of figuring out what tools are going to get you to do it. I don't think it's one size fits all. You can't get out of bed in the morning. You're fucking feeling la lazy and fat and you just want to chronically eat. Why? First, you got to figure out why that's even happening. Because I can't do anything for you and you can't do anything for yourself unless you understand why. When I had my little breakdown the other day and I was like, why is this happening? That was the question. Why is this happening? Why? What? This doesn't make any sense. And then we realized it was definitely probably neurodivergency. We're like, fuck. Okay. Let's figure out if that's really the answer because it definitely wasn't related to mental health. And if it's not related to mental health, what is it? Because I'm used to shit bring, I only break down in relation to mental health, but no, now that I realize it in hindsight, I'm like, oh, I've probably had many of these breakdowns before, but I thought it was mental health. And now I'm realizing it's something different. I'm like, okay, because I've had other breakdowns and like really heated conversations, but I know that's neurodivergency. But because nothing happened, Nothing significant happened. It came out of like, basically, I ran out of spoons. Like I had everything and then it disappeared. But also there was a switch. I was like, what is that? I need to know why. Okay, so now I can actually solve the problem maybe. But if I just assume, oh, it's this, it's this, it's this. Well, that's not the right fucking answer. So if you're having problems getting out of bed every day, we got to know why. And we have to know the real reason why, not the why you tell yourself, not the cope of why, not the easy answer of why. You have to know why. And figuring out the why takes an incredible amount of like introspection and honesty with the self. You know what I mean? It really does. It takes a lot of understanding of the self, which sometimes comes over time. It's not an easy answer. I'm not going to ask you the question and you're going to know exactly the answer. You know, you're not. Harmony said, to be, real, to be real with you, um, this mentality set me into an eating disorder. Like this guy, the, the way David Goggins talks makes me want to binge eat. Not because I have an eating disorder or I binge eat, but like, you know what I mean? It makes me want to sit and eat my food and watch my anime. It makes me want to go hug my husband and tell him I love him. 
it makes me want to be, I just, I'm so grateful for my life. My life is so happy and so joyful. I wake up every day and even when I'm having my little neurodivergent, whatever breakdowns, it's great. It's, it's fine. But this sounds so painful to me. This sounds like so much pain. You know what I mean? It's, it's incredible, but it obviously works for some people. So I'm not going to discount it as helping some people. I'm not going to discount it as helping him. But again, what is your goal? Is your goal just to lose the weight or is your goal to be peaceful and happy? Because I think that's a different goal. And I think it's fair that this is really helpful for the beginning steps of whatever you need, but maybe won't be helpful long term in another way, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? I'm not, I don't want to discount it as completely not helpful for some people, but I definitely at this stage in my life, it's not very helpful. In my 20s, I will say I bullied myself. You know what I mean? I will say I bullied myself, um, but that was a cope, you know? I always do. Every one of us. That's why he flipped it so fast, because he knew what to do. He didn't go by your exact protocol. He didn't go by the exact, no. He knew exactly what to do. And you just saying some shit to him, it woke something up, he knew what to do. And that's the thing that people need to get that. You know what to do, why aren't you doing it? And I'm talking about myself now, you know, those modes of just kind of passive consumption, mm -hmm. they're so easy to wash over us. Mm -hmm. I used to have this thing and I'm fighting this now because mm -hmm. I knew we were gonna have this conversation today where I like to start things on the hour or the half hour. Right. Worst practice in the world for me because if I miss that half hour, I'm like, ah, it's 1233. I'll start at 1245. Right. Uh, it's 1245. I'll start at one. I just lost time. Right. And then, and th so this is so stupid, right? And the other day I was like, man, I got to tell David about this because my new thing is I start no matter what time it is. Right. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I got a friend, he paints in the middle of the night. I'm like, you're an insomniac. He's like, I don't know. I just do it. Then sometimes he goes back to sleep. Sometimes he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got their thing. But I thought about this. I'm like, I'm no more. Am I going to say I'm starting at one? Cause I, I know me, right. if I miss the one o'clock ding right. and my pen's not hitting the paper, I'm not typing on the keyboard. I'm not going to do it. Right. Like that, that's a self-admitted weakness. I love it, man. Um, I had that for a lot of years. Um, I know I'm going to do it. That's By the way, I'm a fan of cope as a temporary band-aid. So uh, Zen says, I personally use self-hate to transform myself physically, and I don't even see how self-love would have been effective. I think I would have just made more excuses with all that self-love talk. Fair. I think this is really powerful, knowing the differences. Hannah says, I've been over 300 pounds, and this type of advice would, be, would have been unimaginably unhelpful, and my feelings would have been hurt. So important to know which category you're in. So I'm not even saying it's bad. I'm saying know your category. In my 20s, I did need to bully myself. In my 30s, I definitely realized that wasn't the goal. In my 20s, I went from self-help or self-love to bullying myself. Self-love to bullying myself. In my 30s, I went to radical acceptance in a philosophy sense and, and let go of and let go of attachment. So for everyone, they're they're gonna have their own thing. I love that for Zen it worked. I love for Hannah that it wouldn't work. I love that David Goggins, this gets him to his goal. I love that for, you know, I just love that things work differently for everyone. That's what I love. And I want you guys to figure out what tools are going to work for you. For me, philosophy, values gave me the why so I could know what my goal was moving forward. Because if I don't know what I'm doing, I'm not doing it. Why? Why am I doing it? Well, because you have to. Why? Well, because society says. Why? Well, because it's the way we do things. Why? What? Why? Why? Oh, you're average. I need you to be better. Why? You shouldn't eat those pancakes. Why? Oh, you shouldn't do this. Why? You better tell me why, bitch. Otherwise, I ain't getting up. That's the haunting part is that it's going to happen. It has to happen. And that's a fact. Like, there's no get out of jail free card, bro. None. Like, that is a life that I don't know. I don't, I don't have that ability or I have the ability. I don't have the, um, I'm not good enough, smart enough. I'm not talented enough. He's so negative on himself. I can't handle it. He's a little too, he's a little too sad. He's a sad boy. He's kind of a sad boy. To do that. Some people are. Some people can start at one. Some people don't have to start at all. If you lack talent, you can't sit back and say, I start in half an hour. I can't do that. I got to start now. And after I get back from starting, I got to start again. And when I get done with that run or that study session, if it wasn't good enough, I gotta go back again. Because repetition is what, is, is, is what taught me everything. So you can honestly outwork anything. But well, he has ADHD, right? So habits are really, really important in ADHD people, apparently to some ADHD people. They say forming habits are kind of key because they keep you going and they help you fight against time blindness and that indicate like that desire to like focus on something and lose yourself. So I'll say he's probably really benefited because of his ADHD to uh, to form those really 
really intense habits because I'm sure they're very difficult to fight. Like the, the ADHD desire to kind of like lose yourself or f get distracted or not focus. And then he said he never took meds for it. So he has to probably put himself. Now, what if I told him, you know, if you just take meds, um, you could have pancakes and still be successful at work. I wonder if he would take it. Probably not because it sounds like a scary change to routine. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. You know what I forgot to share with you? Can I tell you something? So we came, so my partner and I, the reason, I, I'm so dumb. I didn't even tell you the reason. Do you know the reason why my partner and I figured out it was probably a neurodivergent breakdown instead of a mental health one? Other than the fact that I didn't, I wasn't depressed. I didn't have anxiety. I wasn't self-harming or any of those normal, you know, things. Do you know how we put it together that it was probably a neurodivergent breakdown? My schedule got switched. My habits got disturbed. I wake up every day and I do the same thing every day and for a week my shit got fucked and it and it finally piled on and I finally lost it every day I wake up and I do the same thing I wake up I tap my partner we wake up okay I sit on my phone we sit on our phones for like 30 minutes maybe 45 minutes we make out a bit you know kind of cuddle kind of fool around a little bit. Okay. Every day, same schedule every day. Okay. Then we get out of bed. Okay. I go to the bathroom, brush my teeth, wash my face. Okay. I walk out of the bathroom. I go and make myself coffee. Then I either decide if I'm going to eat or not. As of right now, I've been waiting a little bit. I've been eating about 3 p.m. ish. Um, but to be fair, I wake up late, so it doesn't matter that much. Okay. I eat. Then I go take my fucking shower. I go take my fucking shower, okay? And I take a hot goddamn shower, a super hot goddamn shower. And I wash myself and I feel clean and I feel ready for the day. I get out of the shower. I don't leave the bathroom. I get my curls ready. I do all of my curls except for my bangs. Then I go straight to my room, okay? I go straight to my room. I do my makeup. I come back to my bathroom. I finish my bangs. I dry my hair. I de you know, then I walk out and then I do whatever else. Okay. I have a very specific routine for a week. Our water heater was broken for a week. Okay. For a week, I had to literally boil water on the stove, carry it to the shower, cup shower myself because I refuse to take a cold shower. The water here is freezing and I refuse to take a cold shower. I had to cup wash myself for a week. I missed washing my hair twice, no shampoo. No, sorry, once. I shampooed it once, and then the second time I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not fucking doing it, okay? I was miserable. And then every time I was like, oh my God, is the guy not coming to repair it? He's like, no, girl, like he's not coming. I was like, okay, why aren't things moving faster? He's like, welcome to Croatia. I was like, I'm gonna fucking, okay? I'm so mad. I couldn't. It was so cold. It was so awful. I just didn't even want to shower. Some days I didn't even shower. And I hate it. Guys, when I don't shower, I feel like I'm going to freak out. I love showering once or twice a day. I thought I was going to freak out. Basically, the same day I had the breakdown, I looked at him and I was like, if this guy doesn't come repair this goddamn water thing, I'm going to cry and I'm going to freak out. I need my showers. And then we realized like, oh my God, like my whole routine had been shot. My whole, my whole week, like I couldn't even function. I couldn't do a shoot. I couldn't feel pretty. I couldn't feel clean. I just felt so gross. Okay. I felt so awful. We finally got the water heater fixed. And now I feel like a normal person again. But we literally realized, I was like, I need my fucking routine. I need my routine because I could be chill. He even said it. He's like, you know what's so interesting about you? You are very chill. He goes, you are so chill for so long. I genuinely am impressed. And then all of a sudden you have a meltdown and I realize, like, okay, you have like a certain amount of time you can be chill. And then by like the fifth day, there's no Britney chill. Okay. It was true. I was chill. I was like, oh yeah, no water, no big deal. Uh, cold showers, no big deal. Uh, cupping water, no big deal. And then finally by the fifth day, I was like, if I don't get some fucking hot water in my shower, bro, I'm gonna fucking do it. And I was like, oh my God. And I realized like I can be chill, but it eats at me because I can logic my way through it. I can say, hey, there's no hot water. Suck it up, bitch. Willpower, who fucking cares? 
but my body feels overstimulated. My mind starts to want to eat itself. All of a sudden I'm like spinning because I'm like, I just want my routine. I just want my routine. I'm like, you can't have your routine. Let go of the attachment to your routine. I was like, okay, mentally, but physically my body freaked out. My body internally decided we're going to shut down. And I was like, don't shut down on me, bitch. And then no matter what I did, I couldn't do it. I couldn't get off the couch. I couldn't do it. I was like, do it, do it. And I was like, nope. So David Goggins is great. But him saying like, just do it if you really want it, to be honest with you, I didn't. I don't push myself. If I'm literally having a a mental or physical, mostly physical moment, and my body's like, we're not doing it, I go, okay. I guess we're not doing it right now. Now, to be fair, I know when to push through and when not to push through. And that was one of those days where I was like, we're not pushing through this. Now, I did partially push through and do my Discord event. Great event. But I didn't do my photo shoot. And to be fair, the Discord event was a must, but the photo shoot was a hope. So like I said on Wix um, stream yesterday, I always make a list of things I need to do and things I want to do. So I needed to do my Discord event, so I didn't cancel it. I want to do my photo shoot, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Don't worry. I did one once we got hot shower and I looked pretty great. It was a pretty great photo shoot, wasn't it? Anyways, the point was, okay. And oh my gosh, hold on. I totally just realized super chat from AIM, $20. Thank you so much. Like the stream, people. Like the stream, please. Like the stream. Thank you so, so much. What a generous super chat. Thank you. Yes. It's like, This was my life. And I realized, okay, my pattern got fucked. My routine got fucked. Like, okay, I can. And I love water. Ingrid says, um, wait, I just saw water is your stamp, bro. I love, 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 love my shower time. Love my bath time. Love water. I feel so good. That's why I want a pond. If I had an ideal place, it needs water, natural water. I need to get one of those water things that just go off all day, like a water fountain for the house. I need water. I love the water. You guys know when we do meditative um, meditation events, I I do water sounds. I love water. I just want to be in water. I am water. I love water, you know, but oh my gosh, threw me the fuck off. Why are things so slow in Croatia? Because they're European and chill as fuck, bro. They're so chill. I can't be this chill, you know, but oh, that's what triggered it. Like, that's what triggered it, you know? No, not a diffuser fishy, a water fountain. You guys ever see those water fountains? They trickle down water so you have actual natural water sounds in the house. Not a diffuser, an actual water fountain for the house. I want I want one. Anyways, that's what I wanted to say. I love David Goggins, like, insp- like his story is inspirational. But I really want to encourage you guys to give yourselves a moment to eat pancakes, love your children, see your spouses, make out a little bit every morning, um, and, uh, and give yourself a day off. You know, I just want to, I, I'm going to say that's okay. You know, it's that you obviously are a very talented man. Well, I, I have worked hard at certain things and built up some things that I've been good at most of my life. You're made gathering, organizing and disseminating information. Something I've been doing since I was a little kid. I used to give lectures at school on Monday about stuff I learned over the weekend. See, check that out. But they, they took me to a psychiatrist. We're the same age back then. If we got sent to a psychiatrist and then people thought you were crazy. I wasn't one. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So, so I remember feeling like a freak. Also, I didn't have a stutter, but I had a grunting tick. It comes back when I'm tired. And the only thing that helped that was hitting my head on something, shaking my head, which is why skateboarding was good because I'd slam and I'd feel like, oh, feel good. That's not healthy. You know, that's not good. Or just work. Work is what gets mm. it out. It's like an, it's like a RPM or high, you know. Anyway, that's me. The, but yeah, I think certain things over time, I feel like talent or gifts or whatever you want to call them. But there are many things that are exceedingly difficult. Um, interesting that he would self-harm to get himself back together. I, I relate to that. I think I used to self-harm to feel more regulated. Pain makes you focus, which is really great. But I definitely stopped self-harming like four years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, when you do it consistently. And so I try to pay attention to that, but pain really helps you focus, you know? Caitlin says, I can't have a routine in my current life and it's weighing down so heavy on me. Always break down, uh, but I have a kid, so getting out of my uh, hole isn't as easy as if it was just me. Can I say something? I really think that's why nine to fives were driving me crazy. I thrived as a nanny because the schedule was the same every day. When I was at the grocery stores, I could not, I never could have a routine That's why I loved when I worked at grocery stores. I'd say, put me on the same shift every day if you can, and I will be here every day. But if you keep moving my time around, I'm going to fuck up. I'm going to be late. It's going to fuck me up. But I think that's why the world is so stressful sometimes to me. 
Um, because it isn't always predictable, but you know, that's why you have to adapt. And that's why I say, use your willpower to adapt. If you're going to use willpower, which I think is a temporary cope, use it when it matters. Don't use it for your everyday life. That's crazy. Live a life where like you do things because it's a part of your values and not because you're pushing yourself every day and push yourself because it's part of your values, but not because you're using willpower. So obviously that's how I do it. That's, that makes more sense to my brain. Maybe Goggins and I are using the word willpower differently, but from my understanding, willpower means to like push through, right? I don't want to live a life where I always have to push through. I want to live a life that's challenging and has natural suffering and helps me grow, but is also kind and patient and loving. And I want to make sure that I'm not, you know, giving myself excuses to fail or to be lazy but I'm also not beating myself up for enjoying my life. So I think that's a very hard balance to figure out. Well, for me. And I and I have learned from your example. I know that you, you are very both humble and very clear that like you don't have, you say I don't, you're not gonna get it by examining you, but I think the way you're sharing today and the way you shared on other podcasts before, there are pieces that really help people feel into the process of what you're talking about today. We're elaborating on it, I think a lot, you know, this notion of being haunted in the stick. Right. I mean, of course, of course, now it makes so much sense why you don't want to talk about sleep or rest or recovery because that's n- sure that's important. I've heard you say, yes, you sleep. Yes, you eat. Yes, you hydrate. Yes, you, you will stretch your psoas or whatever. But it's funny how that becomes the viral message. That's why I said, fuck that. But today. that's not the unique, that's not the, the unique message that you carry. Yeah. Like anyone can talk about that. So do I have that right? That you're acknowledging sleep is important. Recovery is important, yes. but that's not what you're about. You have to forgo something. Yes. Ice baths, saunas, sleep, nutrition, all this shit. So fucking important, dude. I don't have time for some of it to get to extract. Or I had to extract something I had to give. Like you talk about you when you were younger, you would, you would give these speeches and stuff. The same age you were giving speeches, I was trying to figure out how to say the without stuttering. It's true this week. I've like far gone my sleep. Like I've let my sleep be less, but it's catching up to me already. So today I have to be off the internet at a certain time because I have to wake up tomorrow. I have calls. I have obligations. I have things I have to do. I'm forcing myself to stick to a schedule starting now because I've had too many headaches too many days in a row and I'm not going to trigger a fucking migraine. So it's one of those things where like I I wonder, again, it sounds like his social life is suffering the most, but also I've been reading so many studies on like sleep and what's necessary for avoiding Alzheimer's and dementia. And I really don't want Alzheimer's and dementia. So I'm trying to like pay attention to my sleep habits. Like no offense. Like again, I'd rather make less money if I could sleep more, but I don't need, I'm not motivated the same way he is. And I'm just wondering like, how is his body going to handle this later? You know what I mean? Vash says, I would also say Goggins uses the word willpower to mean control over yourself and pushing through. Yeah, but that's what willpower is. And I would say it's obviously he's damaging himself. He obviously doesn't have a healthy relationship. He's obviously self-harming in my opinion, but in a way that's like leading him to success. But see how he says right here, something has to give. But the question is, what if like the only thing that has to give is like a temporary moment, but he's saying he does it every day. I'm saying, okay, but like, when do you chill? Like, you know what I mean? It's okay to like push through and sacrifice on occasion. But, like, when do you chill? Because what good is being a millionaire if you have dementia? Other than like maybe you can have access to pills that help you. But if you can't remember your own shit, like, you know what I mean? And I realized as I got older that all these things are important. But for me to stop stuttering, I got to build fucking confidence. And speech therapy didn't help that. Nothing helped that. I have to forego a lot of shit to be as fucked up as I am to build confidence. For me to stand in the fucking room of 10,000, of one person, and not and be like, oh, put my head down, let me look around, let me, let me um, read these paragraphs first, and then before I read the paragraphs, because they call me next, let me just leave the room, I'm going to stutter. That's a miserable life. And that's one of many things I did, besides lying, besides being insecure, besides being immature, besides being fat, besides being one of the only black kids in my school. There's a lot of things I had to overcome mm-hmm. to gain confidence. Mm-hmm. And in doing so, a lot of that had to go, a lot of it. So I became the guy that became once again misunderstood. You only sleep four hours a day, two hours a day, sometimes you don't sleep at all. What's this? What's this? What's this? I know it's all important. I can't. Something's got to go. For me. Trauma. This is a traumatized man. This is a traumatized man. This man is traumatized. This man has trauma in his eyes. Like, you know what I mean? If you've... For me to get confidence. Because confidence is a building block of where I'm trying to go. For me to gain confidence in myself, this fucked up kid has got to do a lot of fucked up shit to gain confidence. And along the way, the stutter went away and I gained confidence. And now my life is a little bit more 
There is no balance. Okay. There is no balance. Okay, okay, okay. Self-aware, there is no balance. So David Goggins is definitely not your goals, guys. That's why I don't understand why he's saying everyone's average. Why don't they want to be like me? Well, because, bro, you just said there's no balance. Okay, so he's self-aware. He's n There's no balance. It's a little bit more what it should be for a lot of people, but there'll never be balance because confidence is something that you constantly, confidence and belief, you're building every day. And so something's got to give. No. And I'm willing to forgo a lot of things to have that because I know that is, that is, if you want to give somebody kryptonite, take that shit away from them. This is trauma. This is, this feels like a little boy on a couch who's fighting his dad, which is so fair. And he doesn't have to fix it. He's well off. He's got a wife. He's got his, it's fine. But for me, I would say you need to still do therapy, bro. You have to face your trauma. This this feels like trauma. So yeah, I, I don't sleep sometimes and sometimes I don't eat the right way. Sometimes I don't do this and do that and whatever, man. But you put me in a room with 10,000 people any time of the day and I walk in there thinking I'm the best motherfucker in here because I know what it took to be on this stage. And a lot of people would not do that. So that's what it takes. Hmm. There's a question I've been wanting to ask you since we started. And I thought about coming in here and I've been thinking about in the weeks ahead of this. And I'm going to just come clean and say, I don't exactly know how to ask the question. Just ask so, it. It's about relationships. Oh, do it, man. So I know in myself mm -hmm. that my discipline is much higher when it's just me, but that's because I had certain things early on, but then I, had, I was a terrible student, barely finished high school. But then I, when I got serious, I got serious, but I did that by staying away from everybody. And anyone mm -hmm. who's ever had a relationship of any kind, but in particular romantic relationships knows that yes, you can derive tremendous support from those. Like you got this, baby, you can go and you're like, yeah, I got this. <laughs> she said, I got this, you right, know? Right. It feels great to finish something and share with someone, share a meal, you know, get the hug. But there's another side to all of that. Right that I'd like to learn more about from you, which is there's a warm body next to you mm -hmm. in bed in the morning. You don't want to get up. Mm -hmm. They also have. This is true. I would get much more work done if I wasn't married, but I'd also be making a lot less making love. You know what I mean? I'd be, I'd be getting laid a lot less too. You know what I'm saying? Like I'd be having compa companionship to me is worth working less, but it's true. If I wasn't married, I would be working more. Okay. But I'm married to my soulmate, girl. Who cares about work? Like, I mean, I love work. It's about work-life balance, you know? But again, it is true. Like, of course, I'd be working more if I wasn't married. But like, obviously, I'd rather be married than working more. You know, I just want, I'm so grateful I met my soulmate. I'm not going to like play, like, I'm not going to play this game, okay? Needs. You've got your mission that people sometimes need things from us. Right. But also, oftentimes, the people that love us most, that truly love us and that want to support us, don't understand this thing. Mm -hmm. True. I had really hard conversations with people um, because I became like really, really busy recently. And I told my friends like, I'm going to have less time. I'm very busy right now. And I really expect them. I do expect them to feel a little butthurt over it for a bit. But most of them have been really, really great about it. Everyone's been pretty great about it. Um, but it does feel like something's changed. Like, oh, Brittany as isn't as available right now. Yes, because I'm in my hustle era, girls. But also, I love you. Like, what? nothing's happening in my life. You know what's happening in my life? Work and sleep. So unless you specifically need to catch me up on something in your life, I don't have time to just spend four hours on the phone anymore. And the truth was, is like, I used to have that time because I wasn't in a hustle era where I could spend four hours a day talking to a friend on the phone. I don't have that time anymore. I don't even have, I'm so busy right now. All I'm thinking about is like getting my stuff done and sleeping. Like right now, I'm just like, how do I sleep today? And today's over. over. I've already done everything today. So again, I get it. And they're the first people to tell us, like, listen, take a day off. And then this whole cycle, at least in my head, goes off. Like, you just want a vacation. And then it's almost like a paranoia. I'm not saying anything nice about myself right now. Right. Oh, good, man. Former girlfriends are going to be like, yeah. Like, you know, that they remember. They, so, and, and so support of people close to you is critical. Mm -hmm. This could be friends, could be romantic partners, whatever. But they're also, the, the knife cuts both ways. Yep. It can be the thing that can really undermine this thing that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because the people that care about us also want to see us comfortable. Right. They want to see us happy. They want to see us peaceful. They want to see us in a, wake up from a great night's sleep. And they want things too. Right. So how do you untangle that whole bit? Well, it's funny, man. I'm, I'm unbalanced, but I'm mostly unbalanced towards the family side. We don't get about me. I start being unbalanced. I get all my stuff in. But what I do is I make sure that my family has everything they need. Everything they need. Those who want to be part of my family. Some don't. Some family members don't want to be part of David Goggins. I get it. I got it. That's life. Those who are part of my family, I give them everything they need so they can leave me the fuck alone. I make sure you're happy as fuck because I got to go to work. And I don't mean smoke jumping. I don't mean running. I mean all of it. It takes every, I can't have you in my fucking shit. Can't. So I know for me to have a family, I got to make sure that you realize I'm going to give you everything you need. So when you start bitching at me, I'm going to say, look, hang on. I dedicated my life to give you everything you need. I need this time right here. For me to be the best I can be because this journey started without anybody. And I make sure everybody knows that it comes to my life. I've been left, think about it. I was left alone at a young age 
to figure this shit out. Hmm. I figured it out for myself. It's been very successful for myself. No one's going to come in here and fuck with my shit. That's why I make sure I will take care of whatever you need. Whatever you need from me, you got it. Money, house, my love, my support, I'm going to give you everything you need. That said, I do it the highest level possible. And I'm saying it with Jennifer in the next room. So please come in and say something if it's wrong, Jennifer. I don't give a fuck. Say what you got to say. So then when it's time for me to go to work, I expect you to do the same for me. Because it takes every bit of me to do what I have to do. So I make sure that I'm very unbalanced for my family. <clears throat> so I can be exactly that unbalanced for myself. And that's how I do it. I let people know right up front, I'm not what you want in a man. I guarantee that. There's gonna be a lot of late nights. Discord says he sounds like a rich deadbeat dad. Yeah, so like, okay. So I'm waiting to see if he's being sensational. I want some follow-up questions. When do you spend time with them? When do you make love with them? Or are you a rich dad? Lots of rich fathers have this problem. I pay for your bills. That should be enough. They want your time. Every study is coming out right now saying like boys especially, they want your time. So is he doing the rich dad thing? So many rich dads do this. You guys are so fucking brain dead. Where they're like, I pay for all my kids shit. Isn't that enough? They want you. They don't want your fucking money. So I hope he's going to say, I give them my love and my time. I want Andrew to ask about that. Because some families, some women will settle and they'll make babies with men who they just use as a paycheck. But like that's, I mean, I don't understand how this doesn't attract a gold digger. Okay, let's see though. Maybe we're misunderstanding. Hold on. A lot of early mornings, a lot of times I got to be by myself. Also, I didn't like the way he talked to his wife. We don't, my husband and I do not talk to each other like this. For my family. So I can be exactly my love. The best I can be to have all of it. Go to work. And I don't mean smoke jumping. I don't mean running i mean all of it it takes every i can't have you in my fucking shit can't i can't have you in my fucking shit what is that is that about work or is that about himself so i know for me to have a family i gotta make sure that you realize i'm gonna give you everything you need so when you start bitching at me i'm gonna say look see on. when you start bitching at me see look like i don't like that language i think he's in his third marriage oh my god rip i dedicated my life to give you everything you need i need this time right here for me to be the best I can be because this journey started without anybody. So I did this alone. I don't actually need you. So I need you to not need me past my money. Is that what he's saying? And I make sure everybody knows that because of my life. I've been left. Think about it. I was left alone at a, long, at, at a young age to figure this shit out. I figured it out for myself. It's been very successful for myself. No one's going to come in here and fuck with my shit. That's why I make sure I will take care of whatever you need. Whatever you need from me, you got it. Money, house, my love, my support. I'm going to give you my love, my support. What does that look like? You everything you need that said i do it the highest level possible and i'm saying it with jennifer in the next room so please come in. i don't like the way he talks to jennifer that said i do it the highest level possible and i'm saying it with jennifer in the next room so please come in and say something if it's wrong jennifer i don't give a fuck say what you gotta say come here like how do you talk to the love of your life like that? like what so then it's time for me to go to work i expect you to do the same for me because it's all good this is a traumatized man. This is a traumatized man. Trauma, 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 traumatized man. It takes every bit of me to do what I have to do. So I make sure that I'm very unbalanced for my family. Very unbalanced? Unbalanced? Be exactly that unbalanced for myself. So I can be that unbalanced for myself? He's misspeaking. He's got to be. And that's how I do it. I let people know right up front. I'm not what you want. In I'm not what you want in like a partner? True. Why are you marrying people? Man, I guarantee that. There's going to be a lot of late nights, a lot of early mornings. Ooh, Discord says, I kind of don't like when people revel in talking about how hard their life is or was. It's too much for me. These types are so combative. I agree. I agree. He's got a chip on his shoulder. A lot of times I get to be by myself thinking about the process that is next in my mind. I can't have aggravation. I can't have this, can't have that. There's a lot of things, but I let them know up front. I'm very vocal about that. Sometimes relationships work for me. Sometimes they didn't. But that's who I am. One thing I did wrong in my life was I tried for so many years to please people. Mm. And I did it at the expense of myself. I was leaving a lot in the tank. And, I, and when you do that, you stop living. But the person in your life is happy as fuck because you give them everything they want. They have their, their, their life is full, but you feel empty. And that's not a relationship to me. So for me, it's important that you know exactly who I am because this is what life made. Fishy says this is his ADHD talking. I mean, yeah, maybe. I mean, I get it. But like, why do people marry people if they can't like do both? Like, you know what I mean? But OK, let's see. Let's see. And I'm not trying to change it because I just figured it out. 
So okay. I'm not trying to compromise David Goggins. I would never, ever compromise David Goggins. That doesn't mean I won't give you what you need and what you want and what you desire. But I don't need money. I don't need fame. I don't need shit. So I give it all away. What I do need is to make sure that that willpower is worked on every fucking day and every night for the rest of my life. Because that's the one thing that's going to keep me feeding you, keeping you where you need to be. Because once that willpower is gone, 300 pound David Goggins, he may not be look like it, but I will walk around with it. So the things that are important to you in life, you must do always or you're nobody. Okay. And that's how I handle relationships. Amen to that. Something I could personally. Amen to what? What did he say that was good? No, I have I have like 20 questions. I work on is that upfront, clear communication. Because I, I, it resonates that feeling of like there's something inside that's not getting worked out that I was when I'm on my own, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a lot easier. But then of course, wanting relationships and family, I think that's a healthy part of being human too. Sure. Obviously you've worked it out. So I appreciate you sharing mm -hmm. that. I don't think I've ever heard you talk about no, it that way before. That, man. People are scared of that conversation with their wife, husband, girlfriend, boyfriend. Yeah, but why are you scared of it? Why are you scared to tell a motherfucker, your wife, your husband, who you are? Who you are, exactly. Okay, I think it's fair that he wants to be focused and a workaholic and do all these things. So again, I'm not going to moralize it in a sense that I don't think he's obviously an evil or bad person. I don't think he's a bad person. I think he's obviously a well-intentioned person. He's just too traumatized for me. There's not enough of calmness. There's not enough peace. There's not enough like, where's your... And like, to be fair, that's why no one else can be David Goggins. Because normal, healthy, well-adjusted people spend time with their families in a way that usually does compromise sort of being this great David Goggins kind of character. So I'm not sure or convinced that the people in his life um, aren't fulfilled or do feel fulfilled. It just depends because some people are low maintenance in a way they don't need it. Um, you know, not everyone gets into romantic relationships for the romance. He's been married three times. Not everybody's in marriage for the same reason I'm in marriage or you're in marriage. So, okay, it sounds like he's very... He wants to be free to make his own decisions. It sounds like he definitely had a lot of, um, it sounds like he had a lot of like trauma growing up and he just never got it under control. Uh, Discord says Brittany ain't vibing with him. In the beginning, we were. In the beginning, all of us were vibing. And then we realized he was too traumatized. So it's hard because like when you're a person who's faced your trauma and you see it in others, it just becomes kind of like, a little bit of an ick, but not really. It just becomes like when they're this un like when they're this short, they don't need to face it. It just feels very un unattractive, not in a sexual way, but like in a human way, because it's like you feel scary to me. You're always angry. You're not well adjusted. You think you did everything on your own and no one ever helped you. And maybe that's true. But now you're so resentful of anyone coming in to fuck up your shit. You're basically creating a distance between you and your family. So, okay. It's like, I'm glad that this got him so much success, but he keeps saying it's not about money, but I do think it's about chasing his demons or running away from them. So no, yeah, it's a gay ick. Yes, Matt, it's a gay ick. I'm gay judging. It's not even real judgment. I'm not condemning. I'm not moralizing it. I'm not saying he's a bad person, um, but I, I feel like, yeah, kind of like he feels a little not well adjusted to me, which is totally fine. I'm sure his neurodivergencies, ADHD plays heavily into why he has to be so stringent i'm surprised andrew is just it's totally fine but I, I would have so many questions like oh what does that balance look like um how many hours a day do you spend with family um blah 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 blah. and look his wife can consent to this kind of relationship i'm a, a little upset that the kids can't um not that he has kids right I, I don't it doesn't sound like he has kids so if he doesn't have kids and he has a partner that's completely fine with this setup then i'm good you know what i mean um but it, it's like a little too traumatized for me uh, but again, what did I always say? A certain level of dysfunction with a certain level of determination lands you into success. I love that. You know, Kay says this sounds fear-based. Quote, I caught a glimmer of light and now I got to hold on to it with all I can uh, before life tried to take it away again. End quote, type five. Yeah, exactly. It sounds like he's so traumatized. He doesn't want his family to ever ruin what he's made. So he won't compromise, which is fine. But then he's not much of a team player, is he? You know, which is interesting. Lots of men struggle with this, though. Lots of men think, like, if I'm just paying your bills, what more do you want? So it's okay. It is what it is. Uh, Vash says he has kids. Yeah, I think he, I read that he has a daughter. But I, it's not, I don't, is it in this marriage? Does he have kids in this marriage? Who you are. And that was the problem I had. That's the problem that a lot of us have in life. No one knows who you really are. No one knew who I really was. I went to a school where there were a lot of black kids. A lot of black kids didn't want to be in special ops. I never talked about special ops with black kids. 
Why? I was wondering what, you know, I'm not gonna fit in. That's not what they do. A lot of black kids don't do that kind of shit. So I, whatever I wanted to do, no one really knew the real me growing up because I never want anybody to know the real me. I was always afraid of what you might say or how you're gonna feel or whatever. Sure. You got feelings. That's trauma, by the way. I never wanted anyone to know the real me. That's so fair. In a, in a childhood where he was abandoned the way he was and abused, fair. You have but a, also, that's why you need therapy, my bros. Life that you have to live. So it's important. that. If anyone's read his book, can anyone tell me if he ever went to therapy for his issues? He obviously went to some psychiatrist. He has ADHD. So he obviously got some sort of maybe when he was a kid, though. That was on your mind. You let that person know. Therefore, you're giving them the option to be with you or not. This is who I am. If you don't like it, that's good, man. I, I got it. But this is David Goggins. So that, that, that honest conversation is very important, man. So everybody knows where they stand. That person may not be for you. And that's all good. Yeah, true. This world could use a lot more of that upfront, completely honest. I think you could, should be upfront, but you should know why you're having it. So see how it comes off like strength? But it is, but it's also a red flag. It's like the women that are like, I don't need any men. I don't need a man. But they're actually secretly so desperate for a man. It's like you need to get to the point where you're like, I don't need a relationship to find my joy. But I would be honored if I met my soulmate. Or I'm completely fine being single. But when you're coping, it feels – when he talks, I hear those women that are like, I don't need a man. But you like secretly really want one. You know what I mean? Honest conversation. I feel like so much of the world's problems are because everyone's dancing around these issues. It takes a lot. Recently in the news, seeing people losing their job because they won't say something publicly. You can tell they kind of want it. It's like and people just, I think, deep down really crave the direct message. Like, what are you about? What are you not about? But I think now everyone's afraid of getting canceled. It's a big deal, right? You know, getting canceled that people think, oh, I can't work if I am who I am or or um, if I'm not pretending to be somebody else, then, you know, silence is considered, you know, agreement. You know, there's all sorts of complicated stuff. And I, I do feel for the generation coming up because right. we didn't have social media right. and all of that. That getting just walled off from that, there's a real benefit from just not paying yep. attention. People love to lie. People love to lie. You know, I thought I was the only person, growing, like when I was growing up, I thought I was the only person that lied. Because I live in a bubble. Oh, ooh, 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 bubble. And it's true. Everyone does lie, but you have a different relationship with lying as you get older. People love to lie about who they're not. They love to lie about who they're not, dude. And that's, for me, the reason why I'm so vulnerable and I'm so real and honest, find some- Is David Goggins vulnerable? I'm not getting vulnerable vibes from him. I'm getting um, copium mixed in with blank statements. Like, okay, guys, being vulnerable is not being like, yeah, I was abused as a kid. That's not vulnerability. Telling somebody you were abused as a child is not vulnerability. Right? It's not necessarily. It could just be a story you're saying. Okay? Being vulnerable is talking about how it impacted you. In a, in a real authentic way. I don't know anything about his childhood in this interview, right? Like, I don't know anything about the intimacy of it. I don't know anything about how he felt, how it impacted his relationships. I haven't seen him be vulnerable yet. Somebody come out and tell me I'm lying about my fucking life. And for me to come where I came from and have the resume I have now, you know the confidence you get? How, how he seems open to the extent that he can be, but open and vulnerable aren't the same to me. He seems very unashamed and... Uh, doesn't mind having the conversation he wants to have. I'm not even sure if he considers himself like currently traumatized. So I'm, I I don't know. But I think he is being open. Oh, see, Discord said it's calculated vulnerability, which isn't really vulnerable. Yeah, like he's being open or blunt. But he's not really being vulnerable to me, you know. But I do think he's had his life it feels real. I don't think he's lying. But I wonder if he understands anything about um, his trauma, you know? I don't care. You're going you gonna to judge me? You're going to judge me? What have you done in your life? So me being so... Oh, you're going to judge me? What do you have? You're going to judge me? Who are you? See, I don't think like that. I think like, you're going to judge me? Sounds pretty human. What's the judgment? Oh, you're going to judge me? That's weird. What's your perspective? Oh, you're going to judge me? That makes sense. What's your belief system? He is defensive. And I think that's fine. That's what most people, I think it also, like, it makes sense. It's not a vibe for me. I'm more interested in the person that goes, oh, you're judging me? What's it about? Oh, you're judging me? What's your thoughts? Again, please make videos about me. Please criticize my work. Just get the facts straight. I don't like it when people don't get the facts straight. Because there's plenty to criticize if you get the facts straight. Okay? But I don't like the not getting the facts straight. You know? Honest and so upfront and so truthful. That came with me finally figuring out who I was, but also conquering David Goggins, the demons of David Goggins. Mm. Therefore now, you're just an open book. You look at somebody looking right in the eye and tell them exactly who the fuck you are. You walk away. 
I'm good, bro. I know exactly what this journey took to get here. And that gives you a fire and a passion that people can call you nigger. They can call you if you're a lesbian or gay or bisexual. Call you whatever the fuck you want. If you put yourself in the fire and you come out every fucking day like this, fresh it off, not scared to go back in there again. Come on, man. Your truth is real. You come out every day, man, with a way of talking to people that people don't have. Because there's no truth behind them. And the truth is a starting line. When you sit in the ugly mirror and say, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, and this, you finally started your life. Maybe 40 years old. Maybe 40 years old. Five, six kids, wife. Instead, you look in that mirror and you say, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. Well, basically, I'm not this, I'm not this, I'm not this, I can't do this, I can't do this. I'm all these insecurities. Your life finally started. And once you start that life, man, the truth comes out big time. You don't care. So that's the problem. Most people just don't want to have that conversation to the point where they can go on stage with a million people and say, I'm all this. And have a good day. See ya. It's, it's, it's empowering. It's very empowering. I feel like the, the way we're educated in school, but also outside of school, is we're, we're trained as human beings, these young brains, to try and figure out how to get positive feedback from other people. Yep. It's like we're, we're like little dogs. Yep. You have a bulldog. That's right. I had a bulldog. Saw the picture of your bulldog. She's, <laughs> she's great. They're, Charlie they're, dog. They're an amazing species. They are. Uh, I think of them uh, economy of effort. Yep. Or amazing breed, excuse me. Yep. They're an amazing breed. Economy of effort. They yep. don't do anything unless it's necessary. <laughs> it's kind of the exact opposite of everything it's we're talking David, about. It's yeah. kind of interesting. And they're kind of hedonist. Yes. Now, it is true that they will, they'll die to protect you. Oh, yeah. And it's an instinct. Yes. I saw that with Costello. I'm sure that. saw with Charlie. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's an instinct. But if they're not in that position, hmm. if there's no need to exert effort, they're resting. Yeah. So your bulldog's resting for you. Yes. Got it. Exactly. So you don't need to rest because. Active recovery, Charlie. Perfect. That's it. Perfect. That's going to be your answer from now on. Active recovery, does Charlie. he sleep? Does he rest? Go, no, he somehow worked it out. So his bulldog does it for him. Right. But we're sort of indoctrinated into this way of being from a time that we're young, where, of course, praise feels good, right? Someone tells you, hey, I like that shirt or good job today or nicely done. Or for me, because I like growing up in a big pack of friends growing up and I was never the greatest athlete, wasn't terrible, wasn't great, et cetera, like a fist bump or like a feeling crewed up. And you're just like, yeah, but you've talked about this before in reference to the SEAL teams. We both know a lot of people in that community and the team's component is a big part of it for a lot of people. And it's a wonderful thing. Right. But there's a danger to that dopamine hit, for lack of a better way to put it, mm -hmm. from what we can only derive when it's coming from outside. You're talking about being able to either say good job, but also like just look to one's own personal history and say, I, I've done hard things and I can do it again and again because I do it again and again and again. You're talking about parenting yourself, yep. inspiring yourself. Yep scaring yourself, yep. all of that from the inside. Yes. So very different than the way we're raised, which is to figure out how to get the biscuit. It's funny, man. People want to know how I'm always motivated. It's the unseen work. What you just said is a true statement. Those are false dopamine hits that people are giving you, man. There's no belief in that. These are team work dopamine. Like, I'm out running at 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning, in the gym, long sessions by myself. You, that's real. How am I able to just extract dopamine, the good dopamine, whenever I want? Man, I've trained 99% of my life alone. No one pat me on the back. I did all of the work alone. And while I'm still hard on myself, I know what I did. So whenever times get bad, people are like, oh, this, who's gonna carry the boats and law? That's real. I hate that people know me for that guy because that guy is not every fucking day. Like when they see me, they want that energy. That's not me every day. I can extract it immediately when I need to because when you train alone and I lived alone for so many years in this misery and you're able to get out by yourself, I can take myself to such a level of real, real passion and purpose and like, the feeling I get is something I can't even explain by myself. I don't need anyone. That's why, that's why people come to me to motivate them. No one can motivate me. I have a resume full of fucking motivation. That whenever I'm down, I'm like, oh, hang on, motherfucker. Oh, you know. You know the truth. You know the truth. You know the darkness of the fucking dungeons and the fucking demons that fly. You know. And then from there, it's like, oh, okay. You were there. You know this. There was no one there to pick up the rucksack, to pick up the boat, to pick up the log, to go in there. It was you. It was you. There was no pat on the fucking back at 300, at, at 275, at 250, at 220. No, that was you. So those things that come out of me, that extract from me in the darkness, people are looking for that pat on the back. Where is it? Oh, I don't need it. Because what I've done is in the fucking unseen work, I built Frankenstein. So whenever shit gets nasty, David Goggins goes, you had nobody anyway, motherfucker. So see how I'm talking myself right now? That's me. That shit fires me the fuck up. That shit makes me fucking nuts. You had nobody anyway, motherfucker. Look around you. There was no fucking team. It was you. There was no weight loss program or mom and dad waking you up saying you can do it, you can be better, trying to build belief. You built belief when you had nothing. Rock bottom. You did that. So as times get hard for me, the truth comes out. And my truth is powerful as fuck. It's real. It's tangible. I feel it. It comes out of my brain as I speak about it. I'm reliving every single dark moment of my life to be here. So that is what people don't get. That is what motivates David Goggins is the unseen work. But everybody needs that pat on the back. I have not heard him face his demons. I've only heard him say he runs faster than them. 
I like him in general, but I see a weakness in him and no one is challenging it. And I want to see, has anyone ever challenged David on his trauma? Because you cannot be this dysfunctional and these are your coping mechanisms and it not stem from serious trauma. So I want to know, apparently his life was horrible. How did he work his bearing around that trauma? And did he cope with this success? Because obviously he's living a very unique existence. He's done a very unique thing. But everything he's saying maps on perfectly with everything I understand. And I'm not an expert. I'm not a therapist. With what I know about coping, trauma, and I know about um, like cognitive dissonance. His ADHD makes sense to me. Everything makes sense to me. You know what I mean? It's an interesting story. But again, he just feels like... Yeah, a guy who was traumatized and he turned that trauma into success, but it's not very uncommon. It's just the way he, the, 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 to the point he took it, that's what's the uncommon thing. But to be fair, most people who reach his level are uncommon. So his category of guy is not uncommon. Lots of men do this, but lots of men aren't also famous like David Goggins, like not everyone's Mark Cuban, right? So I think that's kind of one of those things where I'm like, yeah, so his life story is not very unique. The fact that he's famous is unique, but so is so is like every computer genius that didn't end up Mark Cuban just ended up not. Not, not everyone's Bill Gates, but somebody could, you know, not everyone's Mark Zuckerberg, but the people who were going to be those people are those people. That's how I see David Goggins right now. Jessica membership says Netflix trust the uh, the trust. A game of greed, bubbles clashing. What is that? Netflix, the trust, a game of greed. Is that what it's called? He's on a podcast motivating people and selling his brand. I don't think he would have a conversation like that on air. Yeah, well, I think the problem is like that's the part. He goes, I'm open. I'm vulnerable. I'm honest. I'm telling you the truth. But no one's asking him about his trauma. No one's asking him about his upbringing. No one's saying like, hey, do you think like maybe you might be self-destructive in some ways or self-harming? How do you know when you're not self-harming? What's your relationship with your wife like? Because though it's motivational, but it's not very motivational long term. He like shamed people for spending time with their families, right? Like how is that motivational? Like that's for a single person, this is great. For a married person, how is this the life that you would want to sign up for? You know what I mean? That seems weird. There's something... There's something off about what is he motivating? He's motivating for people who are in the slums, who are like in the be- worst part of their life, who who are like single. This is super motivating. But that's it, right? Which is great. I also suggest the trust. Okay, Discord. This is from Ren. Not Discord. Sorry. YouTube membership comment. I also suggest the trust. Okay, so the trust is uh, it's on Netflix. I'll put it in my notes. Is it just called The Trust? The Trust. It's on Netflix. The Trust. A Game of Greed. Okay. A Game of Greed. Maybe we'll make it a Discord event. Um, okay. Interesting. Kay says he's truly an incredible person with an incredible path. No denying that. It's just that the tools he's handing people isn't the most efficient tools um, available to humans. But his tool definitely help those who are using their bare hands. Yeah. I think people who grew up in his situation could probably possibly use these tools but like his tools are pretty useless to I think most people he keeps saying they're useful to most people but that's impossible this is no way these cannot be helpful to most people they can only be helpful to people in very particular and very connected situations but his his accomplishments aren't very helpful to family people to people with who want to have a romantic or intimate time with their kids like people who want to like raise their kids spend time with their kids you know what I mean well, he, you said Goggins doesn't comes from the gutter. He's not speaking to the middle class preppy white boys who hasn't experienced any pain in his life. No, most people haven't experienced his pain in life. Like most people in the West, in America, are not growing up with his level of dysfunction. But he's in his 50s as well. So maybe or 40, late 40s. I'm just saying we're not just saying he doesn't even compare to a lot of poor people. Do you know what I'm saying? Like even people who grow up in his circumstance aren't going to grow up with his circumstance. Or if they do, they're growing up with a different version of the circumstance. I'm saying, why is his, his situation isn't that unique, but they're not also growing up with his circumstance. Oh, this sounds crazy. He isn't, he does not have a unique life for people in that bubble, but he doesn't have the majority of people's life because the majority of people aren't living that life. 
So don't compare him to white preppy kids. Compare him to other people who grew up like him. And that way he's not exceptional. Lots of people grew up with dysfunctional homes in that level of dysfunction. Did he get out of his dysfunction by actually facing himself or, or just facing enough of himself to get successful? It sounds like he faced a big part of himself, which is really, 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 really good. But it also sounds like he's not facing all of himself. At least I'm not hearing in this interview, which would have been even more exciting. You know what I mean? I actually get the criticism you have for Goggins, Bernie. I've actually even thought it myself. I think the answer is simple. Ooh, tell me. Um, getting deep about your trauma doesn't sell. <laughs> Damn. Based. True. Hey, true. But to be fair, I don't want to say that he hasn't done it either because he might have. But I think you're – actually, I think that is true. And doesn't sell as much as the hoorah motivation. I think you're right. I think that's probably true. It doesn't sell as much. But damn, I want to know if he's done it. I want to know because that's so interesting to me. But you're right. I don't think it does sell. I think it'd probably be best for him not to talk about it, especially if it's not resolved. I – Honestly, think he sounds like a very good person. He sounds like he's still working on stuff. The angry thing doesn't work for me, but I could see it working as a shtick. And I do believe him that he's not really focused on money, but I also do think that he's probably being strategic with his brand, which is within reason. Within reason. I don't think people are owed his vulnerability either. I think it's fine to sell himself as vulnerable. I don't think people are owed it. Like we're not owed into his inner workings, you know, Kay says he's a good he's he's a good catapult in other directions for people who have gone far in one extreme of not utilizing agency in their life, but he doesn't seem to get close enough to the middle. Mm -hmm. Oh, but wait. Getting deep about trauma does sell to the right people, but obviously not to the masses. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah, there's something here. OK, now with that said, I have to be disciplined and I have to cut this short. If you guys want to continue it on your own, we made it almost through the whole thing. It's almost three hours and we made it an hour and 45 minutes ish. So I'm going to link it in the chat. If you guys want to finish it on your own, I have to be disciplined and go to bed. So following the Goggins way, even if I don't want to, I have to go to bed and I don't want to go to bed, but I have to go to bed. So I'm going to, I'm going to listen to David Goggins right now and I'm going to go the fuck to sleep. Okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then